Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the May 2020 Disc Memberment, and we've got a good one for you. I am your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And yeah, not only do we have a good one, but this May Disc Memberment may take until June to finish <laughs> uh, listening to. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it, you know, we, we threatened this a month ago, Brian. We said May, You, I think you said it, that May may be really oh, stacked. Yeah. And you predicted it because this was a huge month. I think we had 34 titles this month. Can I go back and change my Ghost Damas <laughs> since everything else pretty oh my much God. Like, yeah, by well, default one. is going to not happen? Oh, uh, <laughs> we did not predict that. At yeah. All. Although one of them got delayed. I guess that Hellraiser's TV series that's, that's coming to HBO, I think, was one of our predictions. That's right. That was a surprise to me. Yeah. So that, that one's that there. That sounds pretty that. cool. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get right into it, guys, because we have no time to waste. Nope. So we are going to go through all of the great hard Blu-rays that are coming out in May. And boy, I hope you've been saving your quarantine money because you're going to need it. There's some fantastic discs out this month and a lot of them. And a lot of stuff, uh, you know, that probably would not have been out this early. But because of the situation with the virus and theaters being closed and that sort of thing, they've been kind of accelerating the uh, VOD and disc release, release dates. Right, and if for those who have the uh, who actually have a stimulus check burning in your pockets, uh, not for long. If you uh, a horror fan, no, I, I don't know if you could afford all these with just that. Yeah, stimulus actually, check. you're right. <laughs> I think you need a stimulus for this just alone, <laughs> a, a, a dismemberment illus. <laughs> all right, so if any of you are just joining us for our dismemberment, we go through uh, the releases week by week for the month, and we also save for the end of the week our pick of the week and our pick of the week. Could be a disc that we feel offers the best value. It may be the best movie we think of that week. Or it could just be just a gut feeling of what me and Brian think is probably, if you had to just buy, if you could only buy one disc that week, that's the one we would grab. Yeah, and spoiler alert, I think we're four for four on matches this week. We really are. And I was surprised because with this big a variety of discs, I thought for certain that we would have different choices for, for at least a couple of these weeks, and we did not. Well, you know what it is? There was one week, and I'll get to that when we get to that week, where I would have probably picked another one until I saw the one that you picked. And I, when I watched the trailer for it and I realized what it was, I was like, oh, yeah, there's no way that I can't <laughs> pick this one. So, But we'll get to that. All right. So Brian and I will trade these off, and let's get started with the week of May 5th, uh, Tuesday, May 5th. First up, from Universal Studios, one that I've been really looking forward to. This is The Lodge from last year, 2019. Assumed to be stepmom is snowed in with her fiancé's two children at a remote holiday village. Just as relations finally begin to thaw between the trio, strange and frightening events threaten to summon psychological demons from her strict religious childhood. The trailer for this one is utterly fantastic, has a really great cast. I really, really want to see this one. Yeah, um, but the kid, I always forget his name, the one that uh, was young, uh, Bill Dembro from It. Yes, yes. Uh, chapter 1 and 2 is in that, and he's uh, really good. He's really good. Um, and, yeah, you know, this one, the trailer on this looks really cool. I, I remember the trailer when it was first, it came out, but I hadn't, obviously, I haven't seen the, seen the movie yet, and I didn't see the trailer again until today, and when I watched it, I was like, you know, there's a lot of, like, twists and turns in this trailer, like, this really, like, is one of those good trailers that kind of pull you in because you're not sure what to expect. Like you can, you can't really necessarily get a good hold on what you, if you haven't seen it yet, what this is going to be about by the trailer. It's, it's just enough tease to where you get the basic thing, but you don't know which, you know, it's, it's some of those trailers. Like they, they, they basically map out the twists and turns for you in the trailer. This one, I think does a good job of showing you a lot of cool stuff without doing that. Yeah, I was a little afraid to watch this trailer, actually, because I didn't want to know much about the film, but I thought they did a pretty good job of not spoiling it. I, I couldn't tell you exactly what this movie's about, even after watching the full two-minute official trailer. Yeah. The uh, special features on this, unfortunately, we don't get a lot, not to be ex- unexpected from a mainstream publisher with a brand new movie. They typically don't do a whole lot on extras. And for this one, you're only getting some trailers. So. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a theme you're going to see too now with this because they're, you know, they're, since there's no theatrical releases to speak of really, these things are that were coming out are getting rushed to, to home release and without really any extras just to get it out, I think, to recoup some of the, the money. So that could be another uh, thing we might see. I hope it's not a trend that we, we see that often, but 
you know, hopefully they'll kind of put a little work into it. Um, so the next one we got, um, it's kind of funny, continues the It Chapter 1 and 2 trend. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, Gretel and Hansel. And, of course, Sophia Lillis uh, is in this one. Um, so a long time ago in a distant – I feel like starting like the the – the Hercules, you know, from Disney. Yeah. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago in a distant fairy tale countryside, a young girl leads her little brother into a dark wood, into a dark wood, it says, <laughs> into dark woods in, in desperate search of food and work, only to stumble upon a nexus of terrifying evil. So obviously they flopped it. They, you know, they switched, switched the title around, but uh, it's, it's classic Hansel and Gretel stories. Um, this is another one that I've been uh, I've been waiting to see. So there's actually a lot of things that came out like the beginning and end of the year, kind of that I wanted to see, and just through mostly seeing um, uh, Rise of Skywalker 85 times in the theater, it like stopped me from seeing a lot of other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so. we would have gone and seen a lot more stuff in the theater had we known we wouldn't be able to go back to the theater. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> another thing. Yeah. So um, didn't think I would have an issue, but yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. So this one's a g- really good trailer. Also, um, again, though, special features are lacking. It only seems to have a storybook featurette on there, which I'm not sure what that is. And that I be... honestly, I had did not know the girl from It was in this, which made me want to see it even more. But I, I had not. I had seen the posters for this, but had not actually watched the trailer until this until this week. So, yeah, and she's becoming like a big deal. I mean, I know she got a lot of acclaim from from her performance as Beverly in it, uh, chapter one and two. Well, she's but in something also, else, right? There's on someone... Netflix, yeah. That um, uh, I'm not okay with this series. Yeah, which I got get to watch it. It's in my queue. I'm definitely looking forward to that too. And then she did another movie, I think, somewhere in between there too. So she's she's uh, going to be a uh, big. I think a big uh, star and she's already got a little hard niche going there, which is kind of nice. So. I could see her being one that grows into an adult star. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because she kind of already kind of has that, like she, she's taken, I mean, even her child roles have been kind of, uh, kind of needed some sort of maturity to it. You yeah. Know, the yeah. Role exactly. of Beverly is not an easy role for a child to play. Uh, so, you know, Based on that alone, she got off to a strong start in having to to you know to to really get some challenging roles. So she already can do it now. You know, as she grows older, I don't know what is she like fifteen or sixteen now, maybe something like that. So she'll be pretty. I think yeah, you're right. I think she'll grow into being a big star. You know, kind of like a Kirsten Dunst almost. Mm-hmm. She kind of yeah. had a lot of kids' roles early on and moved on to some good adult roles. All right, next up from Shout Factory, we have Exorcism at 60,000 feet. And I will say, this one, this one did not strike me as a Shout Factory release, honestly. Yeah, I was actually surprised to see that after I saw the trailer. <laughs> it's from 2019, and uh, I'll read you the synopsis. We all know that air travel can be hell, but on the last flight of a transatlantic passenger airliner, things turned positively demonic when a pandemic, uh-oh, Of infernal possessions breaks out, spreading from passenger to passenger and eventually to the pilot. In order to land safely and survive, a priest, a rabbi, and the surviving crew. What is this, a joke? (laughs) I know. Must band together against the most ungodly turbulence imaginable. And I'm going to be honest, this trailer looked very low budget. And I I put on here looks almost trauma-esque. It really has that campy, low budget feel of trauma movies. And I'm not sure. I don't know. I didn't really... It didn't really strike my fancy, this trailer, I'm going to be quite honest. It did not look like something Shout Factory would put out. Yeah, it wouldn't, and it wouldn't be shocking to see, like, a special feature with Lloyd Kaufman in a dress, you know, yeah, talking about exactly. it. That's, that's how trauma-esque it is. Yeah, and, uh, but do, didn't you, like, like it almost had this, like, weird campiness at one point where you could see Sam Jackson sitting there going, enough of these mother-effing demons <laughs> on this mother-effing plane. Yeah. And I did see Han from Two Broke Girls in there, so yeah. that was kind of a surprise. Yeah. I didn't know where he went. That was a great show. Girls. I love Two Broke Girls. I did, too. I was a, I was a really good show, and I, I think it... It kind of just suddenly ended to me. I don't know. You know what I liked about it, though, is they, they basically went back to a classic sitcom style that nobody was doing. Right. Nobody yeah. was doing that style of sitcom. But they pulled it off by making it very edgy and, you know, yeah. a lot of adult humor. In that sense, it kind of reminded me of, like, Married with Children, that kind of, like, risque humor. But but in a sitcom a, a very classic sitcom format. It was a neat Yeah, I mean, yeah, premise. because it was like that classic, like, female odd couple type of situation, but with the risque of Married with Children thrown in. So it's like you got, like, you know, if you remember the, the original odd couple, it was very tame, even though yeah. it had, you know. But, like, if, so if you add a whole bunch of, of like, 
you know, like, uh, I, I, you know, like risque jokes and innuendos and stuff, and then you pretty much have two broke girls. And, and uh, Kat Dennings was so good in that. She was like, I mean, she was great in ha- the guy that played Han was great. Oleg stole yeah. almost oh, every yeah. scene. He's it in. was it was one of those shows that even when the jokes didn't land, like I still smiled because it it almost had this like charm to it or this nostalgia type to it because of the old ninety sitcoms. I don't know it how. did, and and you know, next week when we uh, we review episode by episode on the new Two Broke Girls <laughs> podcast, I will get to uh, we'll, we'll get go you through up. it scene by scene. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's my cue to to start reading the extras. Uh, <laughs> I I started it. I was the one that pointed out that Han was in it, and I said I basically opened the floodgates, and you just kind of took the wave right in on it. That's okay. Oh well, that's okay, so. <laughs> we have a featurette behind the screams of exorcism at 60,000 feet with cast and crew, a cast to die for featurette, Pookie the Wonder Dog's Guide to Practical Effects featurette, Bill's mm. Big Birthday Bash featurette with Bill Mosley, Exorcism on Skid Row featurette, Theatrical Trailer, and Downtown After Sundown featurette. Interesting. Why is that one like after the theatrical trailer? Usually, theatrical trailer is like the last one that they I list. Don't know. Why? I just copy and paste. <laughs> I just copy yeah. and paste. I just yeah. work here. There's no comment. Well, I guess in the uh, there is uh, there's a feature rep with the credits. There's no commentary. There's no like Han commentary. Well, with this there. budget, I don't think they can afford a commentary. Honestly, that's true. The commentary is just what people say about it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I get this one. I can't wait. The, ne- <laughs> the next release of the week, and one that uh, they're not know, getting before- better. By the way, <laughs> yeah this this is this is this will actually make Exorcism at sixty thousand feet look like uh, like the the genius of like uh, the airplane airport movies, you know, back in the day. This one is by I think there's a new one too, Leo Mark Studios. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen one. this one. So why why not bring out every studio that <laughs> never released a Blu-ray and start with this one? Is everybody saying this right? Insecticidal? Yes, yeah. insecticidal from 2005. Uh, so here's the description on this one. Brilliant sorority girl Cammy's experiment in insect intelligence goes awry, leaving giant mutant insects hunting for food in a sorority house. And the only thing to eat is beautiful sorority sisters. <laughs> well, of course, because they don't eat, right? As That's they right. said in, in Happy Death Day, right? They don't eat breakfast. They don't... It says the <laughs> insect horrors increase in size while their source of food shrinks. So the sorority girls are shrinking? Is that what they're trying to say? <sighs> Uh, the girls fight a savage hit and run battle with whatever weapons they can find, but the insects have more on their super intelligent minds than food. Beautiful Josie becomes a host for more than sorority parties when she is infected with the next generation of mutant insects. Cammy and a few survivors survive the night, leaving insect carnage throughout the house. But to deal with a bug problem, you have to kill them all. Okay, so basically now we've basically told you the whole movie and that... <laughs> The description, <laughs> and yeah, I, that's I. That's it. Seems like a very convoluted plot for what you get in this trailer. When I say bad CGI, I don't mean. Oh. I went to the movies and Thor when he jumped out of that plane. It was some really bad CGI. I'm talking about bad CGI, like oh, really. Yeah. No, this, this is, is this is like ne- you know when they say next level and they mean upward. This is like next level going down. Yeah. From uh from bad. And that was a terrible uh, analogy because I don't know why Thor would be jumping out of a plane. But anyway. Yeah. Whatever. Well, he might have. You never know. <laughs> but um, yeah. So this is this is I, I the only thing I can call this is maybe a bug exploitation film because the trailer <laughs> makes it really does make it clear on who their target audience is. Is pretty much there's in the trailer. Let's see. There's boobs. There's lesbians. Bad CGI. This and it's basically one of those movies you'd kind of find in like only find in the bowels of Amazon Prime, you know, <laughs> which I like, you know, like there is Amazon Prime does have bowels and you can, yeah, you can go very deep into those bowels. Yeah. They, they and, literally will show anything and, and they, they don't even care if the movie's complete. As that, I saw one thing where they, someone said they put the movie on and it like the last five minutes were missing from it. They just throw anything up there. So I don't think there's much of a, uh, there's, a screening process. There's no curation whatsoever for Amazon Prime. They're like, no. sure, we'll put, we'll throw it up there. We got the money. Yeah, yeah, I I put on here that it looked like a sorority girl version of Goosebumps, but that's right. that's actually being unkind to Goosebumps because that's actually it a is. fairly fairly entertaining show, even in the '90s when the CGI was really bad. And you see, they're doing a new live action of that. Yeah, show, actually, that's. I mean, my kids cool. are gonna be excited. They love yeah. Goosebumps. 
All right. So my last one before we get to our pick of the week is called The Expedition. This is from another studio I have not run across yet. New Blood. Um, oh, yeah. Not to be that. confused with, uh, what is that, Friday the 13th chapter. Oh, my uh, gosh. yeah. A New Blood. A New Blood. <laughs> uh, yeah. 2008, The Expedition. A documentary crew entered an asylum to shoot a documentary on the place on Halloween night 2004. Several mysterious things occurred throughout the night leading up to a missing crew member the following morning. So by that description, you might think, oh, kind of a found footage with a documentary crew in a haunted asylum. That sounds pretty cool. And then you watch the trailer and go, nope, because yep. it, this trailer looks like they just kind of slapped it together with all kinds of, uh, I don't know, it's super low budget. And there's like nothing in the trailer at all that looks even remotely scary. Yeah, this is, and this trailer, I think is like, 30 seconds long and it was 29 seconds too long for me because yeah. like after like like right into it i'm like i like i like i like i've never had something and i feel bad because i'm sure someone worked hard on this i don't like yeah i don't like bad mouthing movies but i'm trying to be i'm trying to be honest though without... yeah but i'm gonna be honest here i like i don't think i've ever seen a trailer that quite has lost my interest so fast <laughs> And that could just be the trailer. Maybe the movie is f- totally watchable. I'm just saying. Yeah. I remember Tim and I are strictly commenting on the trailers that we have at hand. Here, right. That's right. Which do- isn't always the easiest to find, you know, because a lot of these things come out with different titles, and IMDb isn't always the gre- greatest at keeping trailers on there. So sometimes you have to search the bowels of YouTube, and and who knows? <laughs> That's the second a lot time of I've used that going term. On in this well, episode. what? Yeah. I mean, I think it's because I maybe my all the quarantine weird foods i've been eating and getting into my stomach but uh, the most impressive thing about this trailer i think is that they seem to rip off an actual 911 operator and i think it's that same one that you hear in all movies that use the 911 operator yeah you know that like we're 911 what's your emergency that standard like stock like getty version of whatever <laughs> Yeah, the Getty image version is the Getty audio of that 911 <laughs> operator. Oh my but, gosh, that's great! Yeah. All right, well, Brian, you get to do our pick of the week for May fifth. Había una vez un príncipe que quería ser tigre. Los tigres no tienen miedo. So I'm I, glad too. I am too because was, you were such a fan and a, such a promoter of this movie. So yeah, this is this is my one of my fa- this is probably my favorite horror film from last year. Um, and that was Tiger's. Well, actually, I saw it last year. It was that, but I think it is his Shutter last year because it was technically from 2017. And that is Tigers Are Not Afraid, of course, by Isa Lopez. Um, who uh, I mean, she just created such a great film with this i mean we're not it's one i'd like to do sometime as a as an actual featured movie but um but uh just in case you haven't seen it yet um it's a dark fairy tale about a gang of five children trying to survive the horrific violence of the cartels and the ghosts created every day by the drug war yeah i I mean this one to me is an automatic purchase i'd there was no way this wasn't pick of the week for me because even though it's free on shutter this is one that that I was waiting for a release, uh, Blu-ray release, because I want that. That deserves a place in the monolith, if anyone does. Um, and this actually is a, a pretty nice uh, little packed disc here for a movie that, uh, you know, that re- really probably, if you were not a big horror fan or and have Shudder, I mean, you might not know about, especially since Fangoria kind of nominated it and then didn't nominate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, so anyway, it has a director's commentary, which is I really want to see. And I'm hoping, you know, I know she uh, is generally uh, speaks Spanish. So I'm wondering if the commentary uh, will at least have the subtitles if she does the commentary in Spanish, because I'd, lo- I'd love to hear the process of this film because I liked it so much. Um, so it's got the director's commentary, uh, Making of Tigers Are Not Afraid featurette. Interview with Guillermo del Toro and Isa Lopez at the Toronto International Film Festival, or TIFF, as you might have heard it. Yeah. Some deleted scenes, casting sessions, and photo galleries. So for just a normal disc, that's got some great features on it. Oh, and it must be said, this one comes in a steelbook version only, I yeah. think. I think it, I was kind of confused because I thought there might have been a prior release because it was a steelbook. But when I started looking, it just looks like they're just releasing it as a steelbook, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it's on, and it's, and it's, it's a, I saw it on Amazon. So it's only 20 bucks. So it's a great price for that movie. You know, that's a movie that I could have seen come out at one of those like $35 ones. Cause it may not get a wider releases as, as some of the other bigger names. And so, you know, my, the name recognition alone may have 
up the price point. I'm glad they're releasing it at a really good price point. Yeah. So let's recap the movies for May 5th. We have The Lodge from 2019, Gretel and Hansel from this year, Exorcism at 60,000 Feet from 2019, Insecticidal from 2005, The Expedition from 2008, and our pick of the week, Tigers Are Not Afraid 2017. Yes. All right. So it's May 12th, and we have another pretty solid week here. And uh, we're going to start things off with, actually, this is probably a, actually a very big week. Uh, yeah. We're going to start things off with another with the uh, kind of mainstream movie uh, trend we've been going through. Sony Pictures Fantasy Island. And this one came out this year, of course, by Blumhouse. And did not get the greatest reviews, but I still want to see it. And it, this one, kind of interesting. I, I, when it first was announced, it was it was widely announced in like the horror circles. And after I started looking at the Blu-ray releases, you know, I always look at the genre tags. And they had it; they did not even have horror tagged on this one. They went kind of a mm. kind of a more dark fantasy type thing. But I went ahead and put it on here anyway because I knew we had talked about the movie in depth that it was a Blumhouse film and it it had gotten the hype in the horror circles. So the synopsis here is: the enigmatic Mister Rourke makes the secret dreams of his lucky guest come true at a luxurious but remote tropical resort. But when the fantasies turn into nightmares, the guests have to solve the island's mystery in order to escape with their lives. It's like almost like Saw meets Fantasy Island. Yeah, I, I don't know what much to say about this other than it just sounds interesting. The uh, the premise of taking that old show, which I absolutely loved, I used to watch as a oh, kid, yeah. and turning it into kind of a dark horror comedy adventure type thing just sounded intriguing. And it does have some some pretty good features. For a mainstream release, it's got uh, deleted scenes, the unrated version of the movie, which mm. should be interesting, uh, as long with, along with the uh, theatrical version, and an unrated director and cast commentary by uh, director Jeff Wadlow and the cast. That's on the unrated version only. Mm, nice. Yeah, the, and this one, I do remember there was one... Um episode of fantasy because i used to watch this and the love boat they were back to back at one point you used to always watch those and do you remember there was one where there was a one of the fantasy where there was something where there was a it was a ghost story involved in it yeah i and i remember that so i'm like so and if you think of some of the other you know that it was ripe for a horror yeah it, I, because, I remember episodes of that scared me a little bit as a kid. Yeah. So I don't know why people were so shocked and criticizing it for trying to make it into a horror movie. If you think of the premise, okay, you go to an island and supposedly all these fantasies happen to you, you know, these your desires and wishes. And as as, as anything is told you through history and in books, TV, movies – you know, whenever, you know, be careful what you wish for kind of a thing. And there's that old, kind of that ominous thing over it anyway. So why was so many people shocked that they decided to go the horror route when it was a show that every week was different? It was, a, it was you know, it was, it was an anthology mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to begin with. So why, I don't understand why people had, a pro I mean, they probably wanted, you know, the plane, the plane, <laughs> you know, they wanted that. But, you know, you can't, that doesn't, you know, I don't know if that would exactly like, play that, out well that wouldn't anymore. work these days but because only people our age have any nostalgia for fantasy island yeah so, and you know maybe we would have been like the two people that went and saw that <laughs> like a straight right, remake. right? yeah so uh, yeah that, they'd be just as good having a remake of the love boat they have to give something to draw younger audiences in who probably don't have any idea what the tv show was about yeah, I still think one of the best, one of the coolest things they should have done with the original fantasy island is had. William Shatner is a guest and just have him come face to face with Ricardo Montalban and they just kind of give their just look at each other. Oh, that would be great. Weird, instant hatred, but, you know, kind of like a wink, wink, nod, nod. And then, and there's just like this, this this back and forth with them that has, you know, that's unusual for Mr. Rourke because he was so pleasant all the time. Yeah. But like, you know, and then be that whole kind of thing that like Star Trek fans would kind of be all giddy about. That I don't know. Great. That's just me. <laughs> this is what quarantine does to me. You should see the – thoughts coming out of my head lately I, I swear some are like amazing genius ideas i think and then some are like like i scare myself with these well you know some, thoughts. i read a good article that said when we come out of this quarantine like the music and the movies and the tv shows and stuff are going to be amazing because people have nothing to do other than like these creators and these artists have nothing to do other than create 
while they're in quarantine. So we may be getting ready for a flood when this thing opens up and gets quote unquote back to normal of some really stellar movies, TV shows, books, music, albums. I mean, you name it. I think it's going to be really, really cool. I've already, I've already read of certain writers and stuff finishing scripts over the quarantine. Yeah, like Ke- Kevin Smith, Mulrats. Yeah, got yeah, that's right. Kevin Mulrats Smith. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and I just, I wonder how many, like, probably not this year because it might be too soon, but do you really think, I wonder if there's going to be like quarantine, like those versions of, of the Hallmark holiday movies, you know, that they have, like they seem to take things from <laughs> Christmas culture. quarantine. Yeah. Oh. Like, you know, that's going to, you know, that's going to oh, be something. Gonna be Someone is going to do that at some point. Yes. You know, maybe not so much like obviously using the, the virus, which is horrible, but using the quarantine, like a different kind of Yeah. Quarantine. Oh yeah. You know, that's going to happen. But, and um, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I you know I just hope though that they they still go ahead with uh I don't know if that was this year but it's probably gonna be next year now I was the Christmas Chronicles too we need the the sack is back you know oh yeah the sack is yeah, back we got that's coming yeah. back so you can never get too much of Kurt Russell's sack never never <laughs> quarantine or nothing we 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 want or his, Donald Sutherland's sack. baby smooth ass right like that like you know quarantine can take things away. Like going outside and doing things, but it cannot take away our love for, for those two items, and that just sounds weird. But I don't care. Okay, so, uh, I'm glad. I, I, it's funny. I've been getting some of my favorite movies here to really read. So the next release is the Shout Factory, and this has been on the, the like you know, being promoted for a while now. I'm glad it's it's on its it's about to be here. Even though I have a, the old DVD version of it, I think it was the. The, whatever the special editions were back then, but uh, and that's Idle Hands Collector's Edition. Uh, so I don't know. I'm sure everyone uh, knows, remember that movie. So it's the devil will find work for Idle Hands to do, but what happens when he chooses the laziest teen slacker in the world to do his dirty work? Anton Tobias is channel surfing, junk food munching, couch potato burnout who can't control the murderous impulses of his recently possessed hand. With the help of his nobified buddies Mick and Panub, Anton's got to stop the rampaging devil appendage before it takes total control of his life and ruins any chance he has with the class hottie Molly, which of course was Jessica Alba. Yep. So at, at prime Jessica Alba time. Oh yes. Know, when she was, oh yes. She was phenomenal. when she was becoming Jessica Alba. <laughs> Yeah, this one looks uh this one looks really great. I, I like definitely enjoyed this movie. Nineteen ninety nine was the was the year on yes, the Yes, I forgot that. Yeah, and I almost forgot to read all these amazing uh, special features. Yeah, on go it through too. these because uh, these are these are fantastic. As Shout Factory oh, yeah. Collectors Editions usually are. Yes, yeah. So and there's just some these are all a lot of these are new that were not on the previous uh special edition from when this first came out. So you have a new audio commentary with actors Devon Sawa, Seth Green, Eldon Henson, and Vivica A. Fox. I'm so, I guess they couldn't get Jessica Alba because that would have been fun for her to revisit. Yeah, that, yeah uh, she's probably back now. Uh, they, probably she's probably she disowned, disowned this, it. even though it was a great yeah. film. It was a good movie. It was. Yeah. It was so, when it came out. It was like the it was like the perfect time of, of that type of movie to come out. Yeah. It was great. Um, new bloody punk fun. An interview with director Rodman Flender. New stoner headspace, an interview with actor Eldon Henson, who's awesome, of course. You've seen him in the Mighty Ducks movie. He was in uh, The Butterfly Effect. Uh, what else was he in? What was that, the movie The Mighty, right, he was in, I think? Um, new, This Face, These Hands, an interview with actor Sean Whalen. So this is, this is a lot of, like, good features coming in. A new sleight of hand, an interview with actor Christopher Hart. New, Written in Blood, an interview with writer Terry Hughes Burton. Then the audio commentary is by director Rodman Flender and actors Seth Green and Eldon Henson. I guess I can only get Devon Sawa for, yeah. for a limited time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had to leave. Um, but I heard he was on hand for some uh... Okay. All right, I'll see myself out. Uh, deleted scenes with optional audio commentary by doctor. Doctor. By doctor. <laughs> He's a doctor I have just now. improved his – I gave him a medical degree. <laughs> this features are so long. Uh, deleted <laughs> with director Rodman Flender. Vintage making of featurette, which is probably the original one that was on there. Storyboard comparisons and theatrical trailer. And yeah, this was a fun movie. I'll have to pick this one up. This I was like this going one. to be my pick of the week until we ran across our other pick of the week. Right. See, that's the problem. It was like this one, every, every, I'd say every week had two potential contenders yeah for for pick of the week this would and not this like would I, be a solid choice if you do, if you guys do not like our pick of the week this week because of the 
genre slash time period it, it takes place in, this right. would be my definitely my second choice. Yes, I agree. All right, so next up is another one I really wanted to see uh, from Lionsgate, Vivarium. Oh, from last man, year, 2019, yeah. this one looks really, really good. A couple looking for the perfect home find themselves trapped in a mysterious labyrinth-like neighborhood of identical houses. And uh, this one has, you know, obviously has a great cast and has a kind of a sci-fi feel to it as well, which I kind of like. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like a mix of, what's that one, Downsizing? Remember with Matt uh, Damon? Yeah. Where he's like in that, it, kind of like that kind of a thing. There's a little bit of Stepford Wife quality A little bit of a Twilight Zone-esque. Twilight Zone, yeah. This, this, this one, it's like... A, when I watched this trailer again, I like I kind of forgot about it until I watched this trailer. I'm like, oh my god, that's right! I I really want to see this. Yeah, this one uh, does come with a couple of good features: an audio commentary with director Lorcan Finnegan and executive producer Brunella Cochiglia. And By the way, Tim, you get extra points for getting through Lorcan Finnegan without saying "begin again." After. I'm just just saying, <laughs> oh, giving man. you props for that. I, missed, I, I would not have been chance. able to do it. I wouldn't have been able to do it. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, creating the suburban nightmare of vivarium feature it so yeah. re- really good trailer too as well yeah great trailer it has that song i love from uh, strangers in fiction in the end credits it's not on the soundtrack that you have to go get separately but um uh there was uh i, I could see this movie. i gotta show i meant to show this uh trailer to julie because this is this is uh, her type of movie i could see her really liking this one and if she saw the trailer instantly wanting to see it i just i've just noticed movies that she seems to latch on to as of late and this one is one i think that would definitely be so oh so i get this one huh yeah but you get <laughs> to say it you get to say the, t- the I do. publisher oh yes it is by Mondo Macabro, Whoa. which we still need to get Mondo from Macabre. Paul. Uh, that yeah. that sound effect. I gotta check in with him and get. That we haven't had a Mondo Macabro in a while. It doesn't seem. We like haven't. It. Yeah, that's probably the main reason why it really hasn't been a uh, a pressing <laughs> element here. But uh, so this movie is. It goes right along with it too. Satanico Pandemonium. That's a great title. <laughs> it is. It is. And actually, by the way, the other title is known as La Sexorcista. Yes. So come on. I mean, that just says it all, right, with that one. So, Sister Maria is known in the convent for her good works and charity, but in the secret depths of her sexual fantasies, of course, <laughs> uh, she is tormented by visions of another world, a world where her forbidden passions are allowed to run free. And I swear, as I was looking at this, I thought it said allowed to none free. But, uh, <laughs> That's, well, that would have been <laughs> accurate. This is Which a is uh, 1975 nun exploitation movie, I believe. Yes. Oh, totally that. And like I said, I, and the main, the main guy looks like Martin Landau sometimes. <laughs> And the trailer definitely promises a major nude scene, <laughs> right, right? As it goes out, yes. there's like just a list, uh, like a bevy of women just sitting there topless with no explanation. I'm pretty sure this movie has more than just one nude scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm i just saying this promises at least one major one. I'm guessing the trailer is made up of all the non-nude scenes, all two minutes of them. Except for that one. Yeah. Except for that yeah. one, like last one where they keep that in. So, so this is interesting. It's two different restorations of the film. I didn't know there were multiple ways to restore a film. I just like how they gave no details. (laughs) There's just two different restorations. That's it. Two different restorations. Oh, and what's this? New audio commentary by Kat Ellinger and Sam Dagan, I guess. Dagan? 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 Yeah, I don't don't know know. what he is. They didn't give him a title, so we don't know what he is. Yeah, and we don't know who directed it either because it just says interview with writer and co-director. So I I guess those people are trying to keep a low profile. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> image Gallery and Mongo Macabro previous. Is that a typo? Or no, that... I copied and pasted it. I refuse okay. to correct anything I copy and paste. So if it says Mongo Macabro, that's what That it... does give us comedy when Tim and I are off a game, which is a lot. But uh, yeah, that one. So if that is Mongo Macabro and that's something completely different, I, I need to know okay, immediately I'm, what that is. I'm going to reveal a little of how the sausage works in our disc memories. <laughs> So I purposely I I'm a big fan of Saturday Night Live when they do the uh, weekend update where um, oh Stefan right well Stefan yes yeah, Stefan for sure and then um, and when Colin Jost and Michael Che trade jokes that they haven't read yet and they have to read them oh, live yeah. on air so I love that kind of comedy so when I copy and paste these special features and these synopses I intentionally do not read them. 
because I want to keep any typographical errors in there. I want to keep any kind of weird, strange wording because it just always leads to comedy. So that's why you'll see like weird stuff like Mongo <laughs> Macabro. Yeah, because that one's great. I because something like it wouldn't shock me that Mongo Macabro is something intentional, but it's probably not. Yeah. unfortunately, because well, that's why we can't have nice like, things. It, because... Like so, there's spinoff for all their yeah. really bad. 1975. Well, like, movies. like, like to be not funny, kind of like how Shout Factory has Scream Factory. Right, like yeah. maybe Mongo. <laughs> Maca- I mean, maybe they have like, like a weird like thing based on fruit movies and call it Mango <laughs> Macabro. I don't know. <laughs> God, that was horrible. Oh, <laughs> quarantine's bad. Me. Guys. Yeah, this is not good for this Tim and I. Good. It's definitely not because this just like makes us unleashed with a fury. <laughs> by we need help. Week. <laughs> yeah we need, we need to get out oh my god i told you that i literally the other day finally after a month and a half like because we got a lot of stuff delivered in when julie and i first went out went to costco which usually like to me is like pretty much become a in a, 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 just an ordeal because and just going into costco i felt like i was like doing the most fun thing ever just walking around and yes, I know it's crazy. Finding things. What the hell? That's what I was telling what Brian is... the other day. I went and pressure washed my mom's shed, and I, it was like vacation. It was like Disney World. I was having so much fun. It was. Just, it really is. So it, this weird. is what it's done. I mean, it's it's so. But you know, what? it'll I mean... make us appreciate things. It will. Oh, it yes. will so no, make it us appreciate will. things. All right. So speaking of appreciating things, why not appreciate our fifth release for this week unearth films what the waters left behind from 2017 the plot revolves around a group of young people that take a trip to the ruins in order to film a documentary about epicuan ignoring the warnings and after a brief tour they get stranded which sounds like a very uh, basic horror plot but the trailer yeah. for this i had to listen to this because brian described it as a drunk johnny cash <laughs> It didn't oh sound my like God. it. I'm, at first, I was like, is this some kind of like sped up Johnny Cash? Like, he had the, whoever this was singing this, yeah. had the, like, the speech patterns of Johnny Cash. Right, like the, the intonation. The intonation that he has. and yeah. the, even the pronunciation was very Johnny Cash esque, but the voice was like way too high. It was really weird. Yeah. Yeah. But he, but like like and I know saying drunk Johnny Cash is kind of like well I think he was a lot but you know but but like like an extra drunk Johnny I guess yeah to to kind of make his voice go higher but it, when I first heard it I was like this is it is it Johnny you know like I didn't know if this was like from his lost like <laughs> it was definitely CD. way off it, it sounded like a maybe like a bad Johnny Cash impersonator maybe yeah, yeah yeah like like one of those people that like think they really sound like Johnny Cash it's like maybe like Johnny Credit or something I don't know. yeah yeah <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Layaway oh, Johnny, pa- Johnny Paycheck Johnny remember Paycheck. there was a guy named Johnny Paycheck this is like that Johnny Layaway up. <laughs> yeah Oh yeah, Johnny Lay. <laughs> All I know is by the end there'll be Johnny returned. But uh, but yeah, but and this was a weird trailer too because like the first half seemed like something like the school district would send you to watch like as a documentary. But then all of a sudden it like gets modernized really fast. Like the the drunk Johnny Cash is like the transition, and then it goes into this modern like almost like a modern version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's so weird. This I kind of want to see it though. It looks it's interesting. That's the thing. It makes like. Like whatever they did, whether accidentally or intentional, uh, I mean, by by some miracle, uh, yeah, you stir up a weird trailer and a little bit drunk Johnny Cash, and and you have now an interest to this film somehow. I don't know. Yeah, very strange. They did it, Tim. They did it. <laughs> All right, what's uh, up next? Oh wait, I, uh, the next one. Okay, so this one, it, we're back to uh, uh, a known company here, Dread Central. And this movie is called They're Inside from 2019. I pretty much, with Dread Central, I always give a thing a look because they usually have some cool stuff. And this one is when two sisters go to an isolated cabin in the woods to film a passion project, family secrets start to get in the way, as do mass strangers filming a passion project of their own. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty decent trailer. There's really nothing on the disc. They, they You know, Dread Central tends to just release their stuff. They yeah. don't really concentrate on the, the substance of the disc because uh you know i think down the road they might become one of those companies that'll do a lot more of that but right now yeah so i mean this is decent i, I this one made me want to see this movie 
Yeah, and Dread Central has a fairly decent newsletter too, which I subscribe to. And they yeah, yeah, we have that. News. And Civil Gore gets yeah. it. Yeah, it goes in there. So uh, next up, another one from Dread Central, Redcon One from 2018. A squad of eight special forces soldiers are assigned a suicide mission to rescue a scientist from a city ruled by the undead. And I did not even watch this trailer. I'm so tired of zombie movies. I just I really and, and like I I literally wrote while this looks halfway decent, unless it's. Unless it's a secret of twain, train to Busan, I just cannot watch any more zombie movies. I'm sorry. I, I can't. And I'll we'll get to this in a, when you hear our, our this week's regular episode uh, where, I, where I watch that uh, Blood Quantum. I, yeah, this just the zombie movies. I, 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 you know, it's like while like there's there's merits to a lot of them, you know, little things. Overall, it's the same. I, I don't know. I just I think it really needs to stand out like a train Busan to Busan does, you know how or or like Zombie Land that's like done all tongue in cheek and and you know and yeah. they, they really like the people. But I'm not saying I mean, it Grim- can't be done well. Cause, oh cause yeah, we've seen some yeah. and, like a uh, Dead Don't Die and, and stuff like that. We've oh yeah, like Dead yeah, which is still one. Oh my god, every time I watch that movie, I think I like it more. Yeah, so, it's been on cable a lot. Oh my god, so I love there have that been movie. some that have kind of broken through recently, but man, right. I am so burned out. So burned out. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it ne- there needs to be just something special, and like, and most of them, I mean, have like, like this tra- like it didn't look bad, like by any means. It's just another zombie film, and you know, and I could be wrong if I watch it, and it could, could have some stuff that totally blows you away. Yeah, but I, you know, I, I at first sight, it doesn't look like that. But you know, all right. This next one looks really interesting. This one is called Abracadabra with a K. From 2018, I actually did not have a publisher on this one. I could not find a publisher. And when you look on Amazon, it's imported from Italy. But uh, yeah, and it's the same guy that did the waters, uh, the waters uh, left behind. Yeah, but this one looks really cool. This one, uh, well, I'm gonna read the description. In the tradition of Jallos of the early 70s, a magician finds himself the target of a sadistic serial killer. So we saw this with The Love Witch most recently is the one I most recently saw. Yeah. Where, where they film it in a style where it looks like it came right, right out of the 70s. I could not believe this was from 2018. I kept thinking I had the wrong movie. Yeah, it's really – I mean they did a really, really good job. I know we went through that phase where a lot of films were doing the 80s throwback. But I find the 70s ones even more impressive. I, th- I think it's just – Yeah, it's, because that's a lot harder yeah. I think to get that – just the – film quality of it there was, there was something in the 70s that was just not it, that's probably hard to i mean great i guess nowadays with filters you can make anything look like anything but but still there's there's also an acting style there's a a, a costume look a hair look yeah, that, that really... you know there's a lot to do you can't just make it look 70s by the filter you need to do some other stuff and it's funny i, I mean i know we were kind of joking about that that other one they did with the the Johnny Cash one, but this one looks like really impressive. I mean, actually, I kind of wanted to see the Johnny Cash one anyway, but yeah, so it's it's interesting. Yeah, and I love magic stuff anyway, so the theme really appeals to me in this one, like a magician. Yeah. So, uh, Speaking of magic, ha- have you watched Now You See Me? No, and I haven't, and I've, I just learned they're doing a third. Oh, they are finally they're, going they're ahead finally with it? They're finally going ahead I've been, with a third, yes. I've been, after the second one, I've been, I was so disheartened to find out that they were going to do like a different – it was like going to – I think in uh, – I don't know. Was it China was going to do like a, a – kind of like a spin off version of it. But it was going to be kind of in the same universe but not like not the same. To kind of like what they did with Paranormal Activity, you know, that th- the third one they did there um, where it was kind of um, – you know, it was like in the same universe but not really focused on it as much. So that's what I was um, – I heard originally was this. But then I had seen – uh, that oh no the third one a true third one is still in the works and it's you know yeah. and the cast was on board but then I hadn't heard much of it so you've just made my day telling me that this because I love those it's gonna be written by um, Aaron Warren Singer who did the American he's most famous for his American Hustle screenplay and oh, he okay. also yeah, yeah. Uh, wrote Top Gun Maverick oh which okay. is coming out so and that uh, he's this is very early stages. I think they, Lionsgate just hired him to write the script. So I don't know. This may be you know, maybe like a 2022 release or something. But it's it's good to know that it's coming out because I've heard – you're not – again, like I said, you're not the first person yeah. that's told me I have to see these movies. I need to, That's something oh to do in God. quarantine. I've got to put that on my list. Okay, so the next one – this is an interesting one here. It's called American Rickshaw. It says, a Miami college student – 
finds himself framed for the murder of an evangelist son. He hooks up with an Asian witch and a stripper to find the real killer and clear his name. As you do. Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what on earth is this really about, though, if you look at the trailer? Because that I didn't get any of that No. from from the trailer. And somehow it has Donald Pleasance in it and a fake uh, Daryl Hannah. And but yet in the scenes that they show Donald Pleasance, he kind of looks like 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 a Paul Lind or a Charles Nelson Riley type of character on one of those 70s variety shows. Oh like he's God. like kooky yeah. Donald Pleasance. And I don't understand. I didn't know there was that side of him, actually. I mean, I would. I guess the reason to see this would be to uh, to just see D- Donald Pleasance. I, it w- I think so, just to see Kooky him, and then try and imagine him in playing the Kooky version as Doctor Loomis instead, like a Kooky Doctor Loomis. Yeah, because this was Halloween Five era Don- Donald Pleasance. So. Yeah. yeah, but can you imagine he did that? Like he went in, like did that kind of role in there, <laughs> and went like he like Michael, yeah. <laughs> you know, like how great would that be? You know. Like instead of like the Michael, you know, like doing. Well, he it got the, the other scripts way. mixed up while he was on oh set. Oh my god! Oh god! There was a sketch sketch we did. Just oh my didn't, gosh! Yeah, didn't plan for that. Could have been great, but oh well. But yeah, so no special features on that. But we've just given you enough. That's right. Actually, you, now you can make your own. By if you want a special feature, we will uh, we'll record one for you. It'll yes, be uh, we'll our. Sketch. You know, that's what we still we we promised or threatened, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, that we were going to be doing that. Remember, for special features that didn't their disc that didn't have it we would kind of add our own that you could yeah I, I still want to do a civil gore theater I rendition know. of some movie script or something well, we, we and now we have the time yeah. we're on quarantine, yeah, we're on quarantine. We're probably yeah. for at least a couple more weeks for sure um depending on where you live and even then that's like i think i'll i think my work is still like kind of like working from home indefinitely anyway i feel like i'm probably gonna be working from home for another two months at least we need to do that. We need to do our uh, Instagram live. That looks. Fun. I find myself watching everybody's Instagram live now. Yeah, like, we definitely like need to do it. Anytime I see it live. pop up, I like swipe up and like watch it. And sometimes I'll like play along and try and just say anything just to see if they'll say, oh, th- yeah. like Civil Gore or something. But you know, we should do <laughs> definitely do the Zoom because uh, Kevin and Amanda did that with their Fox and the Fox oh, Out podcast that. and that had a great. really good time with that so a civil war zoom hangout would be really fun yes i know we know i know we'd get a couple right off the yeah, bat yeah that'd um, be fun. so we, uh so um we'll, we'll start planning well, that before it gets yeah too we got to really work on that you know what that's i'm gonna make a promise i think this weekend my goal is to spend a few hours now just trying to think of like the bonus stuff for civil gore like that like that what we just talked about planning a zoom session doing some instagram live you know what we should do we should submit suggestions for scenes for us to act out Yes. That would be cool. Yeah. That, that way, yes, so we're not committed to a that. whole movie. We could just do like really good scenes and we'll try to do the best thing we can. We might even, I don't know, I would be willing to even do video versions of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If we can't, if we need to, yeah. Well, on the Zoom, I mean, people will find, like, because most, I mean, people know what we probably look like just from the a couple of videos that we've done and, and pictures and stuff. But, like, imagine the people that don't know what we look like yet. They're going to see, like, quarantine version of oh us. Oh, my God. They're going to be so disappointed. Thing. I might have to actually shave. I've been I've decided not to like as of like this week, I'm like, that's it, I'm not shaving until this thing is over. Oh, I did that April first. I'm I'm full on quarantine beard right now. I, I know. I you know what it is? Like it starts to itch and ju- so even when I said that, Julie's like just started laughing at me because she's like, You know you're not gonna be able to do that. I said, No, if I can tweak the parts that bother me the most, just, just trim slightly, I'm gonna go oh, for I'm doing everything it. I'm else. I'm doing beard. it, man. I'm not I told yeah. the kids like I am not shaving until this quarantine's that- over. Until I go yeah, back to work. Out of defiance. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get to our pick of the week. Brian oh, yeah. and I agreed on this one. And I'm going to tell you why, because when you first hear it, you may go, huh? You will always be beautiful, think my child. In a thousand years, you will be as lovely as you are now. Come. No, no. Come. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. All right, this yeah. is uh, from Warner Archive. Mystery of the Wax Museum, 1933. In London, a sculptor of wax figures for a museum is horrified when his employer proposes setting fire to the unpopular museum in order to collect the insurance money. As the wax figures melt amid the blaze, the two men have a fight. After knocking out the sculptor, the owner leaves him to perish among the flames. Thirteen years later, the sculptor resurfaces in New York City for the launch of his own wax museum. The opening coincides with the sudden disappearance of some dead bodies from the city morgue. 
a determined reporter begins to suspect the deranged museum owner of stealing the corpses and using them for the wax figures in his exhibits. So let me tell you why this movie is our pick of the week. Number one, it has the great Fay Ray. Oh my God. From yeah. King Kong. And number two, this is a brand new master of the film, which was restored by the UCLA Film and Television Archive and the Film Foundation in association with Warner Brothers. Funding was provided by the George Lucas Family Foundation. So you're getting a, a brand new remaster of this movie that's never been seen before. A documentary, Remembering Fay Ray, an audio commentary by author and film historian oh. Alan K. Rode, which is not on our list. I know. So, so he's, he's like he's like a, a blank slate on yeah. how we can do. We'll have to think of uh, really quickly how to, how to describe it. Say Rode. Maybe it's Rody. I don't know. I like the uh, Disney guy. Uh, like Joe Rode. Yeah. Audio commentary by Scott McQueen, head of preservation, UCLA Film and Television Archive, and a restoration featurette. And if that wasn't enough, the trailer for this is phenomenal. It looks really yeah. good. It looks like I, I know this sounds funny, but this looks like it was like fifty sixties level of like of quality, you know, you know, because obviously it does not look like it was made like last year. Yeah. But it's like it looks like it's like twenty to thirty years past when it was. That's how good they restored this. Yeah, thing. it looks f- but it doesn't look fake restoration. It just looks really well done. Yeah, it looks fantastic. And I'm always been a huge fan, even on D V D before Blu ray came out. I was always a huge fan of seeing old movies, especially black and white movies, uh, remastered because they look so crisp and so good. And, and sometimes they're they're almost shockingly good how good they look. They can they can do these with these remasters. So really, really looking forward to this one. Mystery of the Wax Museum. That's why it's my pick of the week. Yeah, same here. And you know, and th- I was thinking about this Alan K. Road because I figure we, we'd be doing a disservice to everybody. If we didn't give an imitation, I see. I kind of picture him like two stages of his career. Like I picture him kind of like where, like first, like being the, one of those old like Hollywood guys, like you know, like uh, we're gonna put him in the picture, yeah. you know. Like I kind of picture like one of those guys, but then I have a feeling he's evolved later on to where he's like wearing those big sunglasses with the brown tint. Yes, the, still the same kind of cap that he wore back then when he was the, the Hollywood guy. With a velour shirt. Yes. You know, like a velour collared shirt. Kind of, and he's a lot more mellow now, you know, kind of just going, you know, kind of doing Because he's like gone a, through his career arc. He's, yeah. He has, you know, and he's like, when I reflect back, and he's developed a bit of an accent, yes. too. I'm not sure where from, but he's kind of got a more mellow kind of like accent now. He's he's evolved from the old Hollywood days. So, Cody, have fun trying to transcribe <laughs> all that. <laughs> <laughs> because I know we gave you a lot to work with on that one. All right, yeah. so let's recap May 12th. We had Fantasy Island from 2020, Idle Hands Collector's Edition coming from Shout Factory, 1999, Vivarium from 2019, Satanoko Pandemonium from 1975, What the Waters Left Behind from 2017, There Inside from 2019, Redcon 1 from 2018, <laughs> Abracadabra from 2018, which looks like it's from 1975, uh, American yeah. Rickshaw from 1989 for your daily dose of Donald Pleasance. And our pick of the week, 1933's Mystery of the Wax Museum in a brand new restoration. Looks phenomenal. Yes. And now for a first time in Civil War history, uh, we are halfway through this dismemberment in almost an hour. And so we're going to give you an intermission. Yes. Let's go to the <laughs> and the worst thing is people don't even know what they have coming for them. The, the longest week is yet to come. <laughs> We're going to give you a break there. We're going to give you a short week in here. Yes, this is a short so week. So May 19th next. is your short week. This is where you can take a yes. breather. And there's there's actually uh, mostly TV series this week. So let's get right to it. Yeah. Again, keeping with our theme of our putting our mainstream movies first, we have Universal Studios releasing yes. Brahms The Boy 2, which I threatened to watch. And yes. did not do it this weekend. But uh, this was, of course, from 2020. Got really bad reviews. Yeah. <laughs> really bad. Poor, poor Katie Holmes. Poor, she can't, <laughs> can't catch a break. Uh, but yeah. I'll read the description. After a family moves into the Heelshire Mansion, which... No. <laughs> not the farms? Just the It's the mansion on the farms. But they, you know, they have a great cheese log. Just a great they do. cheese log. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> she eats well here with Brahms, I guess. I <laughs> uh, almost got it confused. It's not right next door to Hidden Valley Ranch. So you have to. Yeah, they're, they're, it's down the road. Down the road. Yeah. Um, so after family moves into a, to the Hillshire Mansion. <laughs> I can't say that was a straight face. Why did they name it that? That just makes me I hungry. Their uh, young know. son soon makes friends with a lifelike doll called Brahms. And this has an alternate end. Is it lifelike, though? <laughs> I, to me, it always. It's looked way too porcelain. It's not to be really lifelike, lifelike at all. No, I know. Uh, this one does have an alternate ending and deleted and alternate scenes, and uh, of course stars Katie Holmes, which um, yeah, this is probably not the best vehicle to stage her comeback, but yeah, I, w- I still want to see this one. I really enjoyed the I, yeah. boy. I thought it was. A, I Me thought too. it was fantastic. I loved it. So I thought I, it was. Yeah, I really liked the first one. Um, so for completion's sake, I want to see this one. Yeah, no, and for completion's sake, I'll probably have to buy it at some point. Well, I don't know if I'll run out to buy it because I can see this one being like one of those like three ninety nine Best Buy ones for uh, Black Friday or something. Actually, I'm curious to see what Black Friday is going to be like this year. Oh God! Because so many places are going to try and and recoup losses. Oh my Lord! If you have some just... money set aside, I think you'll be getting some incredible deals this Christmas. The, yeah, incredible. this could be one of the best holiday seasons. Oh my God! You get gas for a dollar fifty. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, like you know, that you know, you wonder, like you know, when they take it post pandemic and stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, granted, we still could be going through some, you know, the pandemic at that point, but it obviously it'll be a, a different type of, of scale, whatever it is, whether it'll be a second wave, whether it just be a, a slight resurgence and, and some extra precaution gets taken. But by then, you know, you figure by the holiday season, things will be sort of kind of get, you know, like, you know, you're not going to stop the Christmas holiday, pro- you know, with stuff in terms of like, you know, giving a gift to somebody. So the shot, you know, and it, especially if, you know, God forbid they do something again where they have to shut down things and everything's going to be online, yeah, the deals will probably be a. Oh, man, this might be the low. year I get my TV. This might be the year. Uh, yeah, your 4K TV will literally be 99 cents. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it won't be that bad. <laughs> oh. But, uh, but no, it could be like literally, you could probably get it for like $125, like 4K TVs, That's like small ones. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, Oh, the next one. Yeah, so the next one, actually, and it's funny. Originally, this is the one I was talking about. This might have been my pick of the week just because of its its uh, iconic significance. But when you hear our pick of the week, you'll want, you'll, reason, you'll know the reason why we picked it. But uh, this one is by RLJ Entertainment, and it's Creep Show Season 1. Of course, the, it was the, the reboot from Shudder, which uh, both Tim and I were huge fans of. And we actually got the luxury of getting to see one of the episodes together. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. when we uh, when I came out to visit. Um, so the fictional creep show comic books come to life in this anthology series of terrifying tales hosted by the silent creep show ghoul, and that's the creep show ghoul, not the crypt keeper. Because <laughs> I I keep hearing someone going around. Oh my god, this is still the worst Twitter mistake I've ever made <laughs> in my entire life. I don't know what I was thinking. No, it's okay. No, I'm sure I'll, it's it's actually not. As rare as you think, I've seen. A I lot know, of people but it's do still. It, so. it, I still lose sleep over it yeah. every night. That's all right. I forgot room two thirty seven that one time, <laughs> and Becca Scott called me out. So there, there you go. <laughs> but uh, this one's a no brainer, I think, for why you'd want it. Um, it's got cast and crew interviews, behind the scenes footage, creep show season one Easter egg featurette, which is actually that's the one I'm looking forward to the most because I, you know, a lot of them you catch, especially in that first episode. But it's it's always fun to see those little like featurettes yeah, that yeah. show that. Um, audio commentaries with cast and crew episode and comic art photo galleries. That's one of those. Fe- Normally, those those photo galleries, I kind of like. Eh. This one with the with the comic art photo galleries, I think that'll be a really fun feature to actually kind of go through. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, comic art booklet. That's like like art gum eraser. Remember that the, the oh, yeah. attentive chef on uh, Phil Hartman's thing. Uh, <laughs> and then and more. It says so. I'm not sure what the and more is, but um, it's got to be something. But good. wait, there's more. More. All right, so next up, another TV series, Castle Rock Season 2, which I have not actually checked out yet. This is by Warner Brothers, and I've heard Season 2 is really good. I've heard it's actually better than Season 2. I know. One. I got I to binge them all. Actually, Julie and I were actually talking about that was one of the uh, series we were going to start and try and binge through was Season 1, because I only watched the first couple episodes yeah, and I kind of stopped. I so liked I watch. Season 1 okay, but it, it wasn't like, it didn't blow me away, but I've heard Season 2 is a lot better. Uh, of course, based on the stories of Stephen King, the series will intertwine characters and themes from the fictional town of Castle Rock, and it has a featurette, Mother of Sorrow. I'm not going to give the character away, just in case, because it's a it's a major King character that if you 
have not read about season two, it might, I'd like to keep it a surprise for you. So, and the next one, I, I don't know. Again, I, nothing against the series, uh, but it's it's uh, Fear of the Walking Dead Season 5. I, I can't even believe it's Season 5 already. I I mean, I know this one isn't as good as the original, right? A no, I've watched uh, the first two seasons of it, and I hated the first season. Hated it. I hmm. tolerated the second season, and I think I started the third season, and it was growing on me a little bit, but uh, it's, just, you know, it's never equaled up to... The Walking Dead, and I'm already burned out on The Walking Dead. I haven't even finished that series, so um, yeah, I, I, I'm a long way from catching up on this. This for season five, and just an audio commentary on episodes five hundred three, five ten, and five twelve for the extras on that one. So yeah, not not too interested in that one. Okay, so that brings us to our pick of the week: the evil of a man who created a monster by crude surgery and harnessed the tempestuous forces of nature to give it life. This one looks fantastic and, and kind of timely in that uh, this this last week I talked about maybe starting a Hammer movies project, and this is a, definitely a Hammer film. Shout Factory, The Evil of Frankenstein Collector's Edition, 1964. Penniless, Baron Frankenstein, accompanied by his eager assistant Hans, arrives at his family castle near the town of Karlstad, vowing to continue his experiments in the creation of life. Fortuitously finding the creature he was previously working on, he brings it back to a semblance of life, but requires the services of a mesmerist, Zoltan, to successfully animate it. The greedy and vengeful Zoltan secretly sends a monster into town to steal gold and punish the burgomaster and the chief of police, which acts lead to a violent confrontation between the Baron and the townspeople. And of course, this is Peter Cushing in all his lavender and lace glory. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with leather and lace, which was Stevie Nicks and Don Henley. Yes, but how how could you go like how could you go wrong with like lavender and lace on a on a on a dance? And this one I'm gonna look up real quick because I have the hammer films here listed in order. And the evil of Frankenstein was not the last of the Frankenstein, because uh, Frankenstein created woman came after this. Frankenstein must be destroyed. Scar. So there's there's several uh, Frankenstein movies after this one, but uh, this is not the first in the Frankenstein series, which was of course, of course Curse of Frankenstein from '57, followed by Revenge of Frankenstein '58. Uh, looks like maybe the third Frankenstein film in the Hammer series. So still one I definitely want to check out. Uh, this one has some great. Features just like most of the Shout Factory Collector's Editions, of course. And we got another film historian. This has a brand new 4K restoration, a new audio commentary with filmmaker, film historian, Constantine Nazer. Wait, we never had him before? We have. We've had him many times before, but somehow he never made it on our list. And he's oh, no. now he's now so ingrained into Civil War history, we can't make up a character for him. Yeah, no, he's just, he, I think he is what he, he is. is. He's just, yeah. This has a new Men Who Made Hammer, Freddie Francis featurette, a new interview with assistant director William P. Cartledge, a new interview with actress Katie Wilde, which is great. They're getting new interviews with these people that worked on the 67 film, which is really great. Uh, yeah. A TV version of The Evil of Frankenstein from the best available 16 millimeter print, which is neat. The Making of The Evil of Frankenstein, narrated by Edward de Souza and featuring interviews with Wayne Kenzie, Karen Gardner, Hugh Harlow, Pauline Harlow, Peter Cushing, and Don Mengay. A moment with actress Karen Gardner. I guess I could only grab her for a moment. That's a, that's a new f- type of yeah, feature. Yeah, a Tales of Frankenstein TV pilot. That sounds cool. A theatrical trailer and oh. a still gallery. This is going to be a must purchase for me. You know, Pick of the week. I don't always necessarily order them. It's just what I feel I would order if I could only get one disc. This one's definitely getting purchased. No doubt. Well, you need it for your hammer Gotta collection. Gotta have it. Gotta have it for the hammer collection. Yeah, this one sounds yeah. amazing. So that's it for uh, May 19th. So let's recap that real quick. We had Brahms, the boy two from this year. Creep Show season one. That's, of course, the Shudder version of Creep Show, the series. Castle Rock season two. Fear the Walking Dead season five. And our pick of the week, Hammers, the evil of Frankenstein, Shout Factory Collector's Edition, brand new remaster. Cannot go wrong with this disc. It's going to be fantastic. All right. Yes. Now, okay. strap in. Sit back. Sit back. Yeah. Because we got a huge week. This is a this is like two weeks in one. 14 releases 
and some oh, big ones in God. here. May 27th is when all the horror movies are released, apparently. Yes, every one that didn't come out before oh my gosh. has now come out. So, well, let's kick it off with another mainstream title. Universal Studios' The Invisible Man from this year. When Cecilia's abusive ex takes his own life and leaves her fortune, she suspects his death was a hoax. As a series of coincidences turn lethal, Cecilia's works... Well, Cecilia works to prove that she is being hunted by someone nobody can see. Uh, this was actually the last movie I saw in the theater before the pandemic. Yeah, mine too, unless you count. I mean, technically, I mean, I went to Joe Bob's yeah, thing, but, but this was the last actual movie I saw in the theater. Too. Look at that. We, we Civil Gore, like, unity and synergy. You know what's kind of weird is, is I actually told Olivia while we were in the theater, and this was when they were starting to get a little worried. Like, people were already doing the social distancing thing, but stuff was still open. And we were, I remember we were being very cautious when we went to the theater while we were making sure we weren't like standing in line next to anybody or anything. And there, unfortunately we went on a very off night. There was nobody there. And I remember telling Olivia, this could very well be the last movie we see in a theater for a long time. And, and we were right. Yeah, we were right. Yeah. I know. And it's mine is weird. Like the last theater I was in was the one for Joe Bob, which is at the, the Huntington cinema arts center. So that was a, uh, you know that's a theater, you know, and it was a clips and everything, so it wasn't a full movie. But like I remember, I, I we discussed this on the show too. Remember how that was like how nervous I was throughout the whole night, even though once the show started, I kind of got into it, and I, you know, I kind of was doing my own little social distancing by like not really, you know, kind of leaning away and le- or leaning into Julie, so, you know, kind of really avoiding other people at that point and i kind of had you know my own thing but like it really was i was like and i remember tim your line said it you said wow you i think that joe bob thing just snuck in under the radar and within like a day later everything was like all theaters were closed down in our area yeah. <laughs> this one does have some great features for a mainstream universal studios release though oh yeah. I, I think this, this is, one's i can't wait for this, this one's thing. definitely worth picking up as a, as a physical copy uh, has an HDR presentation of the film, Dolby Atmos audio track, deleted scenes, Moss Manifested. <laughs> I love that yeah. title. That's Elizabeth awesome. Moss describes the physical and emotional challenges she faced while portraying Cecilia, a woman whose truth is constantly questioned by those around her. And, and she was so oh, good yeah. in that she role. Is, oh, she's one God. of those actresses that is not afraid to, and I don't mean this in any negative way, to look ugly. Because yeah, yeah I don't mean that yeah. she's a very attractive woman. Yeah. I'm not saying she's ugly. I'm saying oh my god, she's gorgeous. Um, yeah. you know, there's not there's some actresses that aren't going to look you know put themselves through the emotional turmoil to just go completely realistic in, in a performance to the point that they're just like ugly crying and that kind of stuff. And she she does it. She's not afraid. Fearless, fearless nope. actress. She is. She is awesome. Uh, director's journey with Lee went out. One L director Lay One L acts as tour guide through principal photography from day one to day forty. That's probably pretty fascinating. I've never seen a day yeah, by that day. Sounds really thing. cool. That sounds really neat. Uh, the players, yeah. filmmakers, and cast provide an in-depth analysis of each character and how they interact with the unseen terror of the Invisible Man. Timeless terror: a behind-the-scenes look at how writer director Lay One L reimagined this iconic character through the lens of modern technology and socially relatable themes. And then a feature and commentary with writer director Lee One L. This sounds amazing. I, as much as I like the movie, I'm really like genuinely interested in the commentary for this one and the the other yeah. features. It sounds really really good. I and I think this is one we should do when uh, once this comes out, we should make that a, a feature. Yeah, definitely. That, it was a great movie. film and a lot of has a lot of room for discussion too. I think. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. So the next one. Um, I, I'm telling you right now, we're not. Tim and I did not watch the trailers no. for this because this is one of these box sets that just we spend all night watching trailers. And it's Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto, and I, th- I hope I pronounced his name right. I think so, Shinya Tsukamoto. But uh, and it, this basically it's from 1987 to 2018. It includes Tetsuo the Iron Man, Tetsuo Two Body Hammer, The Adventures of Denchu Kozo, Tokyo Fist, Bullet Ballet, A Snake of June. Vital, Haze, Kotoko, and Killing. So it's tons of movies on that. It's just an hour release where they just give you everything. But um, I, I, but I, I said I'm giving this my full endorsement because of just the sheer amount of content on yes. this disc. So there's audio commentaries by Japanese cinema expert Tom Mess on all ten films. And so there's a way ten because I forgot I 
thought I miscounted. I was going to say nine, but it's ten in there. It says, including brand new commentaries on Tetsuo, Tetsuo 2, Tokyo Fist, The Snake of June, Kotoko Killing, The Adventure of Denchu Koso, and Haze. Then it says, a brand new career-spanning interview with Shinya Tsukamoto. It says, An Assault on the Senses, a brand new visual essay on the films and style of Shinya Tsukamoto by Japanese cinema expert Jasper Ooh, Sharp. I like that. Jeff. He's a cinema expert, but I don't He's very, yeah, he's Sharp. Jasper Sharp? Uh, That's a great name for a cinema, Japanese cinema expert. I bet he likes samurai movies. Oh, my God, totally. He's like, what's, what's that with the thing, Kill Bill? Yeah. What is the uh, sword? Yeah. That he's probably got one yeah. of those. Um, <laughs> multiple archival interviews with Shinya Tsukamoto covering every film in the collection. Wow. Shooting a Snake of June in archival, bo- uh, archival, archival behind the scenes featurette on the film's production. Archival the making of Vital featurette. Archival behind the scenes featurette on Vital's world premiere at the Venice Film Festival. Archival featurette on Vital special effects. The making of Haze. An archival behind the scenes featurette of the film's production. Should I really go through all these? No, this there's just a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, basically a lot going on. Um, and by the way, because we haven't seen this this month yet, actually, a double-sided fold-out poster. Yeah. And there's also limited edition packaging you can get with some – which just actually sounds cool. It says original and newly commissioned artwork So by a bunch of different people there. So that's pretty I mean, cool. if you were a fan – I don't. Yeah. I have not seen any of these films, and I don't know this director. But if you're a fan of this, that's a fantastic box set. Yeah, that's like the set you've been waiting yeah. for if you're the fans of, the, of Tetsuo especially. Yeah. So. All right, so next up from Severn Films, we have Horrors of Spider Island from 1960. This is a great synopsis. A team of chorus girls find yeah. themselves caught in a deadly web when they are shipwrecked on a remote South Seas island. The lush tropical isle seems an ideal place to await their rescue. But hidden in the jungle are giant poisonous spiders. A venomous bite transforms the girl's escort into a disfigured beast, half man and half insect. Consumed with lust and craving blood, the monster hunts down the defenseless girls and slaughters them one by one. The ensuing panic drives the dancers to squabble and fight among themselves until they realize that their only hope for survival is to work together in a final stand against the monster. So this one is a a new restoration of the complete uncensored version of the film. A new mm-hmm. restoration of the alternate U.S. release version. It's hot in paradise. The history of Spider Island with Professor Dr. Marcus Stiglegger. <laughs> oh. Wow. Audio interview with actor Alexander Darcy by horror historian oh. David DelVal. You know, I see okay. him. Well, you know, yeah. David DelVal let's, let's, let's is like this. a, uh, he's like, he looks like Frankie Avalon, right? He used to do he used yes. to do like beach blanket bingo type movies back in the day, and that's how he became into, into <laughs> became a horror historian. And he still kind of has like the uh, he still got like kind of the Shatner hair, you know. Even in his older age, he still kind of got the the look. Does he have the chest hair curls? Yes, coming oh out yes, of his, definitely. His open button yes, shirt, definitely. That's okay, David yeah. Delval. What what does he sound like though? Is he kind of like a? a- like a like a bit like a little like a Frankie Avalon. He type sounds of like voice. Frankie Avalon. Yeah, he's got that. Yeah, he he's, does. He's, right? he's smooth with the ladies. It's a lot of babes, like like a saying like "Hey, babe," yeah. like that. He, kind I of mean, thing. horrors of Spider Island. He knows all about it because he, you know, he worked on that. He dated all those girls. You know, he he was the that's guy. True. So I, I have to say that's one of the most well painted images of, of one of our film and I, feel like when he, I could like see him or when it, like when he comes out it, it plays like any, every time he walks into a room it plays like as I walk alone I wonder da, 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 da. Now, now I bet you too his audio interview like as uh like a lot of like he's probably like um sitting on a velvet couch even though this is an audio interview so you can't see it but you just know probably if you listen carefully you'll hear like the velvet move around as he's oh yeah in between it's, words it's total I, I love this alternate clothed scenes <laughs> so that so i i take it that that was what was en- maybe edited because back uh in 1960 nudity was not as common yeah so uh yeah if you want your horrors of spider island a little less nude Get you some alternate clothes scenes trailer yeah, and I'd, li- I'd like yeah i kind of like to see what they what they determine a clothes scene versus a non-clothed scene just because I, you know i'm wondering if, if it was like like you you know they didn't really show anything back then so I don't, i'm wondering i'm you know, really... brian that's an excellent point as a service to our listeners 
I'm going to look up unclothed scenes tonight, so I'll have a point of comparison. Yeah, I think that's a good that's idea. A great idea. Yeah. Yes, let me know. <laughs> All right, now, Brian, know. you're getting I... the one that's going to be your guest, so I'm going to let you go ahead and read this. I don't even know how to say it. Let a, I, it's the strange vice of Mrs. Ward. The Ward. <laughs> because there's an H yeah. at the end, and I don't know if it's, it's intentional. An unnecessary H. And I will say, I have to say... That before I realized it was my guess, I went to watch the trailer. I watched 15 seconds of the trailer, and I still have none the wiser because it was just a lot of moaning. <laughs> so based off of that, and I'm glad they've they've made a 4K restoration of it's this. It's a Severin Films. Thing, but... let's, let's, wait, wait, well, I'll give you – give, we'll, give them the publisher and the date just so they'll – Okay, so it's Severin Films and from 1971. So 1971 should give you some clue. Yeah, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm scrolling down to see Edwidge Fench, Fenich or something. So I think she does like a lot of these these movies with a lot of nudity and in there. I would look to take special attention to the director as well. Sergio Martino. Okay, so I, I, I don't know. I'd have to say it's got to be some sort of like she's totally like some kind of like nymphomaniac type <laughs> of thing. But, but since it's horror related, her vice has got to be that she uses that to – Draw in her victims of some sort. Okay. Well, I don't know what she does to them when she gets them there, but... All right, well, you are completely wrong, as usual. Ah, damn it. An ambassador's wife discovers that one of the men in her life, either her husband, an ex-lover, or her current lover, may be a vicious serial killer. She's the victim in this, Brian, not the perpetrator. Oh, my God. But, But she said she has a vice. Her vice is she chooses bad men. Ah, uh, this is a that is a strange vice. So I guess this titled perfectly. This looks uh, uh. giallo esque, I do believe, because it does a Italian director, nineteen seventies, early seventies, definitely has that vibe to it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, go through the special features. There's some really good stuff on this disc. Yeah. So there's a new 4K restoration of the film, a vice and virtue interview with director Sergio Martinez. Hey, this is going to be a lot of vice. As we pause. Why do featurette writers always use puns in their titles? Like that, why, where can I, I get that job? I know. That's like the made for Tim and I. This, this one's good too. Of Okay, so, well, here's one they missed, actually, if you think about it. It says, cold as ice. It should have said cold as vice, <laughs> but it didn't. It said, interview a screenwriter, Ernesto Gastaldi. <laughs> and here's another one. Vienna vice. Is Miami Vice next? Come on. You, you know we're thinking it. Uh, interview with uh, actor George Hilton and Italian genre historian Antonio Bruccini. <laughs> and I can't even do this because I know I'm gonna, we're going to just insult every Italian person on the planet. At least you didn't say, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't. But I will say this. Just know me and Tim. And I guarantee you can visualize what we would do here in this but i love that he's italian genre historian. i love the, the the film historians that go that one step further and go into another corner of historians you know it's like they're not just the regular historian they're they're like a, 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 a their own like thing but as i anytime i see vice i always think of remember in euro trip like miami wise yeah. number one new show i know i did that joke before but i i can't help it but uh <laughs> Well, now that we've managed to alienate every Italian listener we've ever had. Pretty oh much. My yeah. Uh, our, 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 I can't even say it. Archive interview with actress Edwidge Fenich. <laughs> Introduction by actor George Hilton. She's strong to the finish. W- yeah. Oh, my God. Because she just finishes Edwidge the failure, man. You like okay. my lobster, okay. don't you? Okay, wait, uh, boy, this one went off the rails fast. Uh, We're now mixing movies, yeah. No, audio commentary by, with, Ka- oh my god, with with Cat Ellinger, author of All the Colors of, col- <laughs> why can't I speak tonight? All Colors of Sergio Martino. So she's, she's, she she's gets around pretty order. doing a lot, she's doing a lot of things, Cat Ellinger. And now I think she's a little jealous because now we have that Purrington guy, we got two. You have two cat. Feline themed people on the show. Uh, it's a tra- trailer, an original motion picture soundtrack on a separate CD. I'm glad they, yes. they indicated that. Limited to three thousand units. And if you if you know me and Brian, we are like the least like people that want to offend anybody. People yeah, the- we're, we're like we're worried we offend. Like like you don't know how many times Tim could attest to this. How many times a day after an episode, I write I I ask him like i'm like tim 
like, at, like literally, I think back the morning after of one little thing I said that somehow triggers in my brain 12 to 14 hours later. Maybe I shouldn't have said that <laughs> here. Or maybe that could have accidentally. All right. So next up is In Search of Dracula from 1975. This is actually a documentary exploring the legends of vampires using books, paintings, and early films on the subject. And this has a new 2K remaster of the film and an audio commentary by film historians Lee Gambin and John Harrison, which I don't think we have on our list there, Brian. No, but, if, but I already got there. I, as I saw you scrolling, we're scrolling up to them. I already have their images. They're they're totally like those, like the, the we're two wild and crazy guys. You know, like the first. Oh yeah, yeah. From, like Saturday Night Live. You know, the two, like I could see them just like showing up together in the same outfit. Oh yeah. You know, kind of like finishing, like alternating things. Like this film was great. Oh, you definitely. Know? Like I totally they come can as see a that. pair. Like they're too wacky. Yeah, they're like the wacky film historians. You know, they like they put fun in. Film story. <laughs> Is there such a thing? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, this one. But yeah, that's what they are. I, I could totally see that. So, Cody, you, you got your work yeah. cut out. This one looks cool, though, because it does star Christopher Lee as Dracula. So that's, oh, that's cool. I, I love the, the quote in there in the trailer. It says, yes, Virginia, there really was a Dracula. <laughs> that, I mean, that's got to be up there for best trailer line ever. I mean, it's, it's that's in there. That's great. It's good stuff. The next one is Maniac 4K. This one could have possibly been uh, up there, but, you know, it's just because it's such an iconic movie. But um, then again, it's a re-release. I struggled. This was a Did tough these, week. There was two 4K releases this week that were basically equally good. Um, I just ended up picking yeah. one. We probably could have split these uh, just, just to give both, but I, I kind of just – I had to put the edge – to the other one for a reason I'll get to when I talk about our pick of the week. I'll tell you why. Oh, yeah. No, I think I, I think I know why. But, yeah, it's but we'll go yeah. over it. Yeah. So um, the um, this one, of course, Maniac, is if you've, you haven't seen it. Uh, this is the original 1981. It says, a deeply disturbed man prowls the seedy streets of New York City to stalk and slaughter innocent young women. Of course, this is a classic. And this has got some great features on it, too, which is what was made this so difficult. So it's got... Audio commentary, two of them, in fact. One with producer-director William Lustig and producer Andrew Garoni. Then the second one is with producer-director William Lustig, special makeup effects artist Tom Savini, nice. editor Lorenzo Marinelli, and Joe Spinelli's assistant Luke Walter. So, look, I mean, look, that's two commentaries there, and it's like, interesting how you got the writer, the producer and the director on one of them, and then he's back on the second commentary with a whole bunch of other people. So you get like his like total director view mm-hmm. of it. And then you have like the whole kind of like a production view of it, which is really kind of a cool thing if you look at it. Uh, it's got trailers, TV spots, radio spots, uh, maniac outtakes, which just sounds funny when you say it that way. Uh, returning to the scene of the crime featurette with William Lustig, Anna and the Killer. That's the unofficial sequel to Anna and the Apocalypse. No, okay. Uh, it's interview with star Carolyn Monroe. The Death Dealer interview with special makeups artist Tom Savini. Always going to be a, uh, a winning feature ad if you have tom savini involved uh dark notes interview with composer jay chataway he's he's a real talker if he i know if he was a film historian god <laughs> help them poor man uh <laughs> maniac men interview with songwriters michael Sambello and dennis mctotsky <laughs> the joe spinelli story mr robbie maniac 2 promo reel maniac publicity and maniac controversy. Yeah, this one's a classic, and this is a this is a really really good disc for this movie. I packed with some good yeah. features, and this one definitely would have been all this up was, there as, as my second yeah, pick of the week. This was really a tough one to 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 pass by as pick of the week. But don't worry, we still have like That's eight right. more movies to get to before the pick of the week. All right, oh next God. up, Tempe Digital Reflections on the Living Dead from 1993. This was a uh, 25th anniversary celebration of director George A. Romero's seminal horror classic Night of the Living Dead, with film clips from the original, interviews with many cast and crew members, and comments by such famous fans as directors Wes Craven, Sam Raimi, and Toby Hooper. So this is a documentary released back in 1993 with a, a lot of great uh, information and interviews with some, with some people that have passed on since then, uh, Wes Craven and Toby Hooper, that uh, would be interesting to watch. Uh, it does have a audio commentary, a complete unedited roundtable, 101 minutes, original 1993 mm. VHS version, which was 83 minutes, and then a uh, free soundtrack MP3 download and a free Vimeo on-demand streaming 
link. So you get a kind of a digital copy and a free soundtrack to this documentary. Mm. Well, I'm just going to say David Weiner did it first with his In Search right. of Tomorrow. Yeah, but this one looks This one looks cool. <laughs> if you, one I think yeah. that would probably have been easy to overlook or miss since it came out in the uh, early 90s. Yeah, and actually, I think it's on. Uh, I think I saw it on either YouTube or Amazon already. So you could probably see it now yeah. if you want. Oh, next one. It's me. It's me. Uh, next one is uh, Vinegar Syndromes, Pale Blood. This is actually I had this on VHS. I remember this one. Uh, it's Michael Fury is a vampire, but contrary to myth and legend, he does not stalk innocent victim to drain them of blood and life. Rather, only drinks what he needs to survive. He's a thoughtful yeah. vampire, I guess. But when a vicious and very human killer begins murdering young women in Los Angeles by biting them and draining their blood, sparking fears that a vampire is prowling the city, Michael realizes that it will be up to him to unmask the fiend behind these deaths to save the good name of his vampire brethren. And um, this one is uh, it's, it's it basically brings back uh, Wings Hauser to the Civil War <laughs> yes. experiment. Because remember he had that week where it was like he was in half yeah. the films? Well, he's back. <laughs> So this one's got some good special features, though. I might have to pick this one up because uh, it's got a newly scanned and restored in 2K from its 35 millimeter interpositive. There's that interpositive thing. Understanding immortality. An interview with director Vivi Dashin Su, acting with eggs. <laughs> <laughs> an interview with actress Darcy DeMoss. Why is it uh, her? Uh, and reversible cover artwork is back. So yeah, that's from a. That's a good release, though. It's a good movie. All right, next up is Satan's Slave from Severn Films. This is a 1982 film, and the synopsis is, Since the death of his wife, Munarto, and his two children, Rita and Tommy, are quite shaken, especially Tommy. On the advice of his friend, he goes to a fortune teller, <laughs> some friend, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? who forecasts the destruction of his family. At the oh suggestion God. of the fortune teller, Tommy learns black magic through books. Munarto gets a housemaid through an agency. Darmina starts to work in their house. Tommy is suspicious because she looks exactly like the fortune teller he once visited. So, what? Yeah. So uh, yeah. Didn't we? Th- this wasn't on like or just remember it in the past. I swear to God. Or was this, maybe this was on Shutter. I for some reason this movie I know, I've heard I remember mentioning it a lot. It does sound familiar. The uh, title Satan Slave. I don't know. I want to know who that that guy is. It kind of looks like like if Remus Lupin was stealing like Sam Elliott's stash game. Though, have you know? Did you see that guy in there? <laughs> yeah. Like, kept appearing in the trailers. We're like, who is that? He didn't really say much, but well, maybe he sold his soul to Satan for a fabulous mustache. Well, I mean, as far as selling your soul to Satan and getting something in return, I I really think Sam Elliott's mustache has got to be on that that top 10 easily, right? Yeah, I went down a YouTube rabbit hole one night of just watching Sam Elliott interviews and it was fascinating. Oh my god. Yeah, it was just he's just he's he's the same person he is in the movies. Like he's not acting. He's just do he's just being Sam so, Elliott. But did he say something he goes there's many people that would like my stash. Uh, he he talks like that for everything. They even had really? him. They were having, had him on Jimmy Fallon just reading random stuff in his Sam Elliott voice. It was great. Oh my god, it was great. That's that would be yeah. They see that's you know how they have like the you know we 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 recently uh, experienced as you know using that cameo app. Like, can you imagine he was on there. Oh, oh my god, I, just, I think I'd start sending messages to myself just like for like you know like daily affirmations or something. I know. You know? Wouldn't it be great to just have him say, "Well, good morning, Brian." <laughs> Today's going to be one hell of a day. <laughs> and then he's like, then he starts getting tired of you. And he's like, you're spending an awful lot of money for me to talk to you every morning, Brian. I know. Yeah. He'd be like, couldn't you just repeat the one I gave you last week? <laughs> we really should. We should talk about the man who killed Hitler and then the Bigfoot. I, I still got to see it. I got to watch it. Oh, that, man. Yeah. It's such a I know, crazy I gotta... movie. Yeah. I need to watch that. All right, so uh, back to Satan Slave. We have yeah. a. Uh, <laughs> well, man, we get into some Sa- tangents here. New really, restoration yeah. of the film. Satan's box office interview with producer Gope T. Santani. Indonesian mm. Atmosphere interview with screenwriter Imam Tantawi. Satan's Slave Obsession audio interview with remake director Joko Anwar. Hmm. So there you go. Satan Slave. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll, I will say the movie, the trailer kind of held my interest to some degree. To 
Oh, it's a, it's an it, it's like, an early '80s. I mean, I'm sure it's worth a, worth a look. Yeah, totally, totally. Like it's one of those ones that like you're like, hmm. Yeah, I might have to kind of check this one out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's a purchase, but it's it's <laughs> definitely a, a. I think I check it out. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, so I get two next time here. I yeah, say yeah, you get the double feature. So yeah, so this is release eleven, but it's really eleven and twelve in terms of movies. But it's it's well, actually, no, I take that back with that whole uh, Tetsuo box set. God knows what movie it is, but this is release eleven. We'll just say from Dark Force Entertainment, and this is a t- uh, two, uh, I guess, two disc set here. It's The Gates of Hell and Psycho from Texas. So yeah, so I'll read to you each description. It's both. It says in gates in the gates of hell, a reporter and a psychic race to close the gates of hell after the suicide of a clergyman caused them to open, allowing the dead to rise from their graves. In Psycho from Texas, a drifter hitman is hired by a local businessman to kidnap the local oil baron. The hitman had been reared in squalor, <laughs> suffering the abuses of his whoring mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, glad I didn't can, read that before. Read I don't that, think I can, can get through. Let me read that line again, because that is a thing of beauty. Let's read that again. Yeah. Okay. The hitman had been reared in squalor, suffering the abuses of his whoring mama. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wrote that. That's like a country I mean, song lyric, isn't it? That is fantastic. That's poetry right I, there. You know who we need to say that, though? You know who we need to repeat that line? Sam Elliott. Absolutely. Would you like the honors of this one, Tim? Um. I, I don't know. I'm not Sam Elliott. It's not very good. I just told I don't think you. anyone Sam Elliott's good well, is. I'll give Tam it a Elliott. shot. I'll give it a shot. I think it's the stash that like it changes yeah, the, well, the timbre or the timbre in his down voice. So he can, I'll try to do it since I got a deep voice. Here we go. Okay. The hitman had been reared in squalor, suffering the abuses of his whoring mama. See, that was good. That oh, was like, okay. that's the way that needs to be said, okay. I think. Okay. And now, now we just need to work on the rest of the country song yeah. that that fits into. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so then it says, when the Baron escapes, his assistant must chase him with while the hitman takes care of a few loose ends, which is probably saying is probably trying to deal with the fact that uh, about that whoring mama. I guess yeah. I don't know, but uh, so the, I don't know if you saw these trailers, but the, the Gates of Hell one. It said it looked like a weird retro reality show, though, but it had a really good like drilling through a head scene. Okay. So it like it was weird. I was like I was expecting this to be really bad, and then they had a really good, like practical effect of a drill going through someone's head with some okay. splitting blood, which was kind of cool. So that that got a points there. But the psycho from Texas, all I got from this trailer really was that someone is killing people, but Steve wouldn't. He wouldn't <laughs> because that's what the girl's screaming throughout. So I don't know. Of course, Steve so that's wouldn't. All I got. He's a Steve. I He's know. not a Chad. I know. Chad's would because the pop collar is just like yeah. guides the, the douchiness. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the. Uh, I mean, yeah, Steve wouldn't. Steve's just. Steve's are cool. So. All right. They're the anti Chad. And there's no special features on it other than no. possibly a hidden uh, Sam Elliott impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> you press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right on your remote yeah, control, yeah. And, and Tim does <laughs> and a Sam Elliott go. impression. All right. Now that would be a special feature. Uh, okay, next up from Dark Force Entertainment, we have Breeders from 1997, not to be confused with the other Breeders. <laughs> and it, yeah. And it's also AKA Deadly Instincts. Yep. So 1997. Yeah, well, the other Breeders was a kind of an 80s classic. This one is. Well, I originally thought that's what this one was. And then I saw the date and I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is not what I thought it was. But we'll uh, we'll read the synopsis here. It's an invasion of the most personal and terrifying kind. When a meteorite crash lands onto a Boston college campus and an alien beast is released, only one man understands its mission to mate. From the depths of an all-girls college, the grotesque monster stalks his prey in a cat-and-mouse chase until the final conflict where only one species can survive. Breeders! What depths? You know, what depths of, of, of an all-girls college? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a wicked had... Wicked hot alien movie, and is it still the? Uh, is it still like the? Uh, is like the bowels of Amazon? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the bowels Amazon of something, Prime. all right. I don't yeah. know what it is. Uh, no features on this one, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> depending on your yeah. point of view. <laughs> yeah, it really does not look great. Yeah. Uh, by this is like the. Uh, I would almost dare to say the pick of the week to avoid, but yeah. <laughs> this is the anti-pick of the week. One movie you're not going to buy that might be it. But. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Uh, 
So, oh, the next the next one, I like when I first saw it, I was like, "What is this?" But then when I saw who's in it, it oh, made a bit we have thing, a caveat but, uh, for this one. So originally on the Blu-ray release list, this was supposed to be coming out May twelfth. That may oh, right, that may right. still be accurate. I went ahead and moved it to May twenty seventh because everything I saw, especially like on Amazon, said it was releasing the twenty seventh. So it could be the twelfth or it could be the twenty seventh. I don't know. It'll definitely be out by the twenty seventh. Yeah, I mean, the thing lately things have been like really like there's been a fluid release date yeah. on a lot of these things. They keep changing. So, uh, yeah, I think I think you yeah almost have to take other than the main releases, you must have to take everything with a with a like a little bit of of grain of salt and kind of look it up edition because yeah. the way things are lately it's just been especially changing. with us doing these a month in advance they they tend to shuffle around by a week or two sometimes right right so okay so this one blood tide this has got a, a not much of a description but uh when you find it the trailer it, it adds to it so it says an adventurer hunting for treasure in greece accidentally frees a monster that forces local villagers to sacrifice virgins so yeah, that that kind of stinks for that village, I guess. But uh, well, <laughs> but the the best is that this stars James Earl Jones and Martin Cove. Yeah, this is this is like a maybe some kind of underground classic we didn't know about. I know this uh, just with those two in it, I have to see it because like you know, like I want him to say like you know, you know like like him doing his his like screaming dojo thing, and then James Earl Jones yeah jo- James Earl Jones just going baseball you know like from <laughs> but something like that but yeah this one this one's got to go and this one's got some decent special features on it <sighs> Sap- <Yeah. laughs> sacrifice your virgins <sighs> i know imagine it's like he's got the vader voice going in there or the or simba like simba simba but uh so uh or what was he what did i just see him? oh yeah what's the sandlot the other day i was on and um you know i love that scene with james earl jones when he's you know at the end but <laughs> anyway but uh enough james earl jones i mean because we could go on forever with him yeah. i mean him and him and uh sam elliott in the same like dismemberment week is is could really oh, send a tangent that, that would probably cause forever. some kind of low frequency earthquake to occur yeah. because of <laughs> right? tectonic plates that? would be triggered or something yeah they can't be in the yeah. same state that, yeah, you know what? With all the things going on in quarantine, why don't those two collaborate and just do a conversation between James Earl Jones and Sam Elliott? Can you imagine that? I would watch that thing, quarantine or no quarantine. I'd like a ra- arrange my schedule around that. <laughs> Wouldn't you? I would. I mean, of course I would. I mean, that that is just epic. And then Martin Cove can just kind of be like the, the, the sidekick. You know? I would love to watch just, Sam just Elliott because. do a cooking show where he just makes like beans on a fire or... Oh my yeah. god! And then, then at the end, when he samples it, it'll just be like, "That's delicious!" Yeah. And you just see the bean <laughs> juice like in his <laughs> fluttering through his mustache. Oh, it'll be a glorious! glorious I'll tell show. you, see, you know, like you said, like in earlier of this thing about all the content coming out. Look what we just created in a matter of ten seconds. Like I the know. best cooking show ever need, on the planet. I mean, where's our agent to to get us these yeah. gigs? Or I mean, we just well, call us. We got we got tons of well, ideas. Well, we have an intern, Cody. Maybe you can uh, reach out and find out Sam Elliott's contact info and tell him we've got his next gig yeah. for the for the foreseeable future. <laughs> uh, <laughs> brand new, okay, I can't even get to these special features now. Okay, so they got it's a brand new restoration 4K scan of the original camera negative, original uncompressed mono audio. So obviously, audio was a big thing when James Earl Jones was involved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Brand new audio commentary with director, co-writer Richard Jeffries. Newly filmed interview with producer, co-writer Nico Mastarakis. I feel we've discussed oh, that name before. Nico Mastarakis. Right? He was the uh, he was involved in some kind of Nicolas Cage thing. He's got, yeah, he was right. Yeah, I, or is that Cosmo Panatos? <laughs> I don't know. We're getting the two. Or was it Cosmo Kramer? Was that Seinfeld? Yeah, it's one of the two. I don't. know. But uh, gonna, and this I'll one, look him up one, while you continue. Okay, good. Yeah, and here's one that you'll like, Tim. This is a reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Graham Humphreys. So that's uh, kind of a cool Okay, one. okay. Um, Nico Mastrakis is the Greek filmmaker who did, let's see, he did The Wind. He did, maybe maybe that's where we saw him on The Wind. The one that coming out, one of our dismemberments, I think. I don't know. He has nothing, he has nothing to do with Nicolas Cage. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, I think you you probably mixed up him with Panos Cosmatos. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, um, the wind one was I think a, that's another Wings Hauser one. I think a couple from a couple of dismemberments ago. So. Yeah, uh, I don't know. 
All right, so next up, before we get to our pick of the week, we have Arrow's The Woman from 2011. When a successful country lawyer captures and attempts to quote-unquote civilize the last remaining member of a violent clan that has roamed the Northeast Coast for decades, he puts the lives of his family in jeopardy. Yeah, this one has a bunch of features, though. Uh, yeah. New 4K restoration, supervised and approved by Lucky McKee. New commentary. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. We can't. We can't just gloss over that name. <laughs> oh, there's some doozies. What is, in he, this. is he like? Supervi- is he like a like a, a 1950s Vegas gambler or whatever? Like, what is that? <laughs> Lucky McKee. Oh, like what? What is it? Like, can't you piece it? Like, I don't know. You know, Sounds him like just a... walking in and like, you know, like he's one of those ones that like walks by a craps table, like just waves his hand, and then everyone wins. You know, that <laughs> seems like what that guy is like. I don't. Or either that, or he's a leprechaun. Who knows? I mean, he could I'm be. Lucky McKee. And you yeah. found me out of gold. Too bad he's not a film historian because that would be a fun oh, one. Oh man, we've insulted Italians and Irish in the same episode. Yeah. Great. Uh, New commentary with director Lucky McKee, editors, <laughs> man, editor Zach Passero, sound designer Andrew Smetic, S- 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 and Sean Spillane. Like, oh, okay, you know he totally goes with Lucky McGee. You know? Oh my god! Ah, so I I, I met, met I was at uh, the Sands and I met up with Sean Spillane. You know. <laughs> oh no! Wait, it gets better. We have a new commentary by star Pollyanna McIntosh. <laughs> Oh, she I know the her I've heard of. She's been in a couple of she a uh, couple of uh, That's movies. a great name. So, that's yeah, a fantastic that's a good name. name. Um yeah. and we don't like to make fun of people's I'm not making fun of people's names. I just I love unusual names. I think they're fascinating. Oh, I love No, them. me too. I I And you know what what uh, you want names I find what I really like is when there's a like the person goes by their f- full like name but with like a the third name in there, you know? Yeah. Like if it's like they'll go by their middle name, but not but not even if it's always a middle name. If it's like a you know a hyphened last name for some reason, like that just I, I don't know. I love those. Yeah, I love when there's like the third name. Well, I have to. You, I have to. Basically, I see every new employee at my work. I, every new employee's account comes through me, so I see literally dozens and dozens of names a week. And anytime I see like an unusual funny name, I always like shoot it off to one of my coworkers and be like, "Hey, check this one out." And it's not, we're not making fun of the person. We're not making fun of their name. I just think it's neat. Like most of these names aren't like funny, like ha ha, like, like, oh, his name is, um, you know, something obscene or something. It's not like that. It's just that they're, they're so unusual. They sound like something out of a novel or something. I think those are really cool. Yeah. So I actually, I have an interesting thing. Cause I was like, why do, why, what, what did I just hear about Polly McIntosh in? And it was the movie Darlin that just came out. And that is an actual direct sequel to this movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I knew about that. I knew about that. There's a yeah. sequel to this. Uh, archive commentary with director Lucky McKee. Dad on the Wall, a brand new 75 minute fly on the wall behind the scenes documentary filmed by the director's father, Mike McKee. Huh. <laughs> Being Peggy Cleek, <laughs> a newly filmed interview. Yeah, there's a name, right? <laughs> a newly filmed interview with star Lauren Ashley Carter. Lauren Ashley Carter is a great actress name. Yes. See there, and there's one. That's exactly the type of name I was yeah. talking about. Like when it just flows the off the tongue. Uh, yeah. Malum Domesticam, an archive making of featurette. Meet the Makers, a short featurette on the making of the film. Deleted scenes. Me Burrow, a short film by editor <laughs> Zach Passero. Distracted music video by Sean Spillane. Fright Fest total oh film panel discussion. A 2011 on stage chat about the future of American indie horror at the popular horror film festival featuring Lucky McKee, Andrew Van Den Houten, Larry Fessenden, Adam Green, Joe Lynch, and Ty oh. West. Oh, check that out. That's some good people. Yeah, there. theatrical trailers and image galleries. I mean, there's a lot of... I, I don't know anything about this movie, but there's some great extras on here. It's an Aero disc. I mean, that's that's a solid yeah. selection there. Yeah, well, now, now I'm kind of want to seek this one out because of that. that I want to see that and Darlin. Yeah. Actually, I've heard a lot of good things about both. So. All right, Brian, well, you're going to get the honors of our last pick of the week for May. They're coming back to life. They're everywhere. Okay, and this one, when you you know, we, we as we were saying, this could have easily been 
I mean, it, this week was a little tougher because I could have easily been picked, uh, you know, could have gone the easy route with Invisible Man, could have done that amazing uh, Shinya Tsukamoto box set because of the sheer content. I mean, that in Search of Dracula, now that we found out more about it, but it probably its biggest competitor head on because the other ones kind of all kind of cancel each other out was the Maniac 4K because, again, it was an iconic movie and it's being released in 4K with a bunch of new features. But this one just, I think, has to beat it. And that's Zombie in 4K. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that's both our pick of the weeks. It's Obviously, if you haven't heard, it's uh, strangers looking for a woman's father arrive at a tropical island where a doctor desperately searches for a cause and cure of the re- recent epidemic of the undead. And that's, you know, obviously a true classic. And there, there is a massive amount of features on this. So there's an audio commentary, the first one, with Troy Howarth, author of Splintered Vision, Lucio. Yeah, oh, what? Wait, Brian. It might pronounce it. Is it Lucio or Lucio? I don't know. If I, I always have I say said Lucio. I say Lucio, Lucio Fulci, okay. but you did not pronounce Any Troy films. Howarth in the proper context because Troy Howarth is a posh Englishman oh, that's film right. critic. Troy Howarth. Troy Howarth. 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 <laughs> Bully, I've got it wrong. It's been a long evening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's author of Splintered Visions, uh, Lucio Fulci, and his films. Audio commentary two, so you get a second one. And that's star Ian McCulloch with Diabolic magazine editor Jason J. Slater. Sounds like that. That's he sounds like an editor, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. Yes. It's like you know Joey Jonah Jameson is <laughs> J, J, Jason J. Slater. Yeah, that's right up there. When the Earth spits out the dead, <laughs> interviews with Stephen Thrower, <laughs> author of Beyond Terror, the films of Lucio Fulci. Wait, wasn't that the other? Thing? Oh no, that was Lucio Filci on his films, and this is the fil- yeah. films of Lucio Filci. Okay, <laughs> really? Uh, there's, a, there's uh, two books I got to get now. Yeah, I know. Right? They're probably the same. Just one reads one way, <laughs> one reads the backwards. Uh, theatrical trailers, TV spots, radio spots, poster still, and gallery. Guillermo de Toro intro, which is that's got to be kind of cool. Uh, Zombie Wasteland interviews with stars Ian McCulloch, Richard Johnson, Al Cliver, and actor stuntman Ottaviano Delacqua. Oh, I think I've said like that, that one right. Yeah, Flesh Eaters on Film interview with co-producer Fabrizio Delangelis. <laughs> I love Fabrizio. The, na- the That's names a good are name. just just killing me. These last two. They're yeah, great. They, these are some good ones. Yeah, there's more coming too. So, Dead Time Stories interviews with co-writers Elisa Brigante and uncredited Dardano Sacchetti. Ah, yes. Why did poor Dardano Sacchetti got get uncredited? It should be credited. That's, that's, that's a great yeah. name to be credited. For. I know. Then, World of the Dead, interviews with cinematographer Sergio Salvati and production and costume designer Walter Patriarca. Basically, if you're not mentioned on this disc, you have not, you don't exist no, no. on this film. Uh, Zombie Italiano, interviews with special effects makeup artist <laughs> Gianetto De Rossi and Maurizio Trani, and special effects artist Gino De Rossi. Doesn't Zombie Italiano uh, sound like a really delicious dish at an Italian restaurant? It really uh, does. I think it's what Olive Garden serves on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that's... I'll that's have the All you can eat zombie Italiano and breadsticks, you know? <laughs> Dead sticks. Uh, we're, we're, get, we're going to hell. Okay. <laughs> Notes on a headstone. Interview with composer Fabio Frizzi. Literally everyone that has, uh, like, remotely done anything to this film... I love it. Is, ...is on this now. All in the Family. An interview with an- Antonella Fulci. And Zombie Lover, award-winning filmmaker Guillermo de Toro, talks about one of his favorite films. That's great. The, yeah, that that is that is one packed disc full of of just like film history. You know, I mean, that's really cool. Actually, you know, yeah. I mean, and that, the more, more more I was reading through those those uh, special features, the more I am confident in our pick. Yeah, and I had a kind of, of a week. special nostalgic reason for wanting to choose this as my pick of the week, and it's kind of a funny thing. I don't. I, don't remember if I've told the story on the podcast. I probably did back in our early days. But uh, I used to belong to this um, general like game forum. And they had like a trade section where you could, you could you know, people would sell stuff and trade stuff back and forth. And uh, one of this guy, one of the guys was selling some horror DVDs and he was selling Zombie. I had never seen it before. And I said, you know what, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll buy it from him. He's selling for like five bucks or something, right? So um, I bought it off of him. He sent it to me, and he was like, oh, man, I can't wait for you to watch this. It's such a great movie and everything. I was like, yeah, that's cool, man. I'll... So I, I stuck it on the shelf, and it's you know it's one of those movies I just never got around to watching. And like every – like first it was like every few days it would be like, hey, man, did you watch Zombie yet? And I'm like, oh, no, man, I'll, maybe I'll try to watch it this weekend. 
And then that turned into like every few weeks he would ask me, hey, man, do you ever watch Zombie? And then it got to the point like he'd ask me like every couple months. And I still hadn't watched it. And then it got to the mm-hmm. point where I didn't want to watch it because then that would take away the fun of this whole game we were playing. So it went on, <laughs> this literally went on for years. I had this movie on my shelf and I actually refused to watch it because I I didn't want to break the chain of him asking me. And I never wanted to get to that point where he finally said, did you watch it? And I said, yes, because it would just ruin everything. Yeah. It would ruin the inside joke that we had carried out for literally years. And unfortunately, before I could like make this full circle and put a conclusion to this, he ended up leaving the Ooh. forum and I never heard from him again. So, oh, so, no. so he, uh, he left the thread dangling. I left a loose thread. So I have since watched yeah. it, of course, and, and really enjoyed it. So that was my what little funny... No, I don't know how to get up with him. So, if you're out there, what? But if you countered him, would that be like the one of the top three things you did you you discuss? Like, would that would be like, hey, how you doing? You doing okay? By the way, I watch Zombie. That like, would be would the, that the that would be the absolute first thing we discussed. That's that's literally yeah. our only link, pretty much. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could be worse links. Yeah. I mean, you know. I don't know. That's just my little funny story about Zombie. So, uh, but yeah, 4K too. That's that's pretty neat. I'm sure it looks. Yeah, pretty, pretty I mean. Fantastic. So uh, let's recap this crazy week of May 27th. We had The Invisible Man from 2020, Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto, a great 10 film box set. We had Horrors yeah. of Spider Island from 1960, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, 1971, Documentary in Search of Dracula, 1975, Christopher Lee. Maniac 4K, yes. which is our second runner-up for Pick of the Week. Maniac 4K. Maniac is a fantastic, fantastic movie. Uh, Reflections on the Living Dead, another documentary from the early 90s, reflecting on uh, George Romero's work. Pale Blood from 1990. Satan's Slave from 1982. Double Feature, The Gates of Hell, Psycho from Texas, 1975 and 1980. Breeders from 1987. 19, sorry, 1997. Blood Tide from 1982 and The Woman from 2011. And then, to wrap it all up, our pick of the week, Zombie 4K 1979, Lucio Fulci, Masterpiece. Go grab that one. And uh, that's it. That's it for May. Lots of crazy, crazy, crazy great titles out there and plenty to spend your money on. Oh, is there ever. And I was actually looking ahead, like trying to plan some orderings for this May to make sure I have stuff in. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. God, where do you, is, where do you begin? Tough. Where do you begin? It is like, you know, right off the, you know, it's like still had, um, uh, what was I saying? There was still some of the, uh, early, like ones that, uh, I was supposed to come this week that are coming next week that I had, that I hadn't ordered like Elvira. So that's coming next week. So it's like, it's like blending in from the end of April, right into, uh, to May all the way through. Looks like so far, I kind of looked ahead and I didn't see much of, uh, for June yet of anything that looks like that's going to be too many. I mean, there's a couple of things like the hunt, you know, some more mainstream stuff, but I didn't, when I looked ahead, I didn't see too many crazy things, but that was an early look. Yeah. So. Well, you're also going to get, you're going to, I think you're going to have to start getting diminishing returns because there's no more theatrical releases coming out to, to right. become Blu-rays. So what you're going to get is only older films uh, for the next, for over the summer months. So we'll see how it goes, but uh Yeah. Great month. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was our longest dismemberment yet, I believe, as far as our monthlies. And uh, we'll be back here in June, and hopefully, we'll have some better news on the old cor- yes. on the old uh, virus by then. Yes, it would be nice to kind of be talking about a potential theatrical release and and stuff. But we'll we'll see. Yep. we'll see. We're go- we're going to be optimistically cautious. No, wait, that's not right. Right, cautiously optimistic. Yeah, that's there what you I go. meant to say. I said it backwards. <laughs> See, it's that it's that whole like that documentary thing that got me all messed up. I went back and forth. Those books you want to read. Okay. All right, guys. So stay safe, yep. and we'll see you back here next month with a new dismemberment. Or we'll see you later. I'm gonna go make some beans. <laughs>